important for them uh, and their manager Graham Potter. Today against Tottenham, next week at home against Leeds in the Premier League and then the return leg against Borussia Dortmund uh, in the Champions League last 16, second leg, 1-0 down from the first tie. We are underway. Thiago Silva back in the Chelsea defence, plays it back to Kalidou Koulibaly in his bright orange boots. He goes wide to Ben Chilwell. Felix takes it on the turn quite beautifully, his first touch of the afternoon. Drifts away from a couple of Tottenham challenges, plays it into the path of Rhys James, so he's back in the Chelsea ranks as well. Little pass from him back to Loftus-Cheek. Confident start from Chelsea. Tottenham unchanged from the 2-0 win against West Ham last Sunday. Six changes for Chelsea after the 1-0 defeat at home against Southampton. The pass through is collected by Fraser Forster. Just one thing on that Chelsea lineup, Paul Robinson, I noted. Rhys James and Ben Chilwell out there together for Chelsea. That has not happened that often this season, and that that actually is pretty crucial. Very much so. I think when they when they have played together, I think it's three out of the four that they've won, and the other one was the Dortmund game in midweek where the team actually played very very well. So you know it's it's an interesting thing what what they've done, and he's put them out together today. But Kukurel once again not anywhere near the squad. Sterling gets a first run at the Tottenham defence here, taking on Romero into the penalty area, surrounded by white shirts. Sterling gets clipped, possibly goes down, holding his left shin. The referee Stuart Atwell had a good view of that, and immediately move both arms across his chest to say no penalty shot wide from Joao Felix and immediately Felix gets up and then says to the referee the VAR needs to have a look at the penalty shout and tempers boiling over already right at the start of this game Enzo Fernandez involved Eric Dyer involved Christian Romero involved let's have a little look on our monitors Paul at the challenge on Sterling there's no contact no, there he doesn't Oliver Skip doesn't touch him he goes to kick the ball granted he misses the ball Sterling sees the opportunity to go over his right leg very easily but I don't get that Ali why players crowd around the referee screaming to look at VAR VAR looks at everything there was a melee there was a surrounding the referee completely unnecessary VAR will be looking Raheem Sterling may have been expecting contact there but that is a very strong contender for the simulation game on 606 tonight <laughs> because there was not a touch and down he went and quite rightly the referee spotted it on the pitch and VAR not interested either so Tottenham nil Chelsea nil I'll give you the team lineups in just a second couple of minutes played Tottenham yet to really get on the ball they get the chance now Harry Kane sweeping pass perfect pass obviously out to the right to Emerson Royale skip making a run on the outside followed out there by Koulibaly little flick ball in field to Kulashevsky goes for the cutback Koulibaly chests it down it falls to Royale scuffs across into the Chelsea penalty area and Chilwell very calmly plays it away and here come Chelsea on the counter that's not a good ball from Felix he could have got Sterling away down the left Romero is able to come back and intercept for Tottenham Paul well if the rest of the game is like it started we're in for a great one it's a basketball game at the moment you attack wheel attack I think that's a really good point you make about expecting contact so many players now the pace that the game's played at expect contact and when it doesn't come it turns into a dive which is what happened with Sterling there good noise inside the stadium as you'd expect Kulishevsky making a run through and Kepa very quickly off his line for Chelsea clears with his right foot Hoybier chests the ball down inside his own half and then Clement Longley, the left-sided centre-back, plays back to Dyer. Forward to Kane. Kane again. Booming ball out to the right. Emerson Royale slightly miscontrols. He still has it. Gets away from Sterling. Gets a lucky bounce back into his path. But now Chelsea have it. This is wide open, as Paul Robinson was just saying, in the early stages of this derby. And Ben Chilwell's just going to calm things down a little for Chelsea. Take control of the ball and play back into his own half. Let's try and give you these two teams just to remind you. Fraser Forster in goal for Tottenham, Romero, Dyer and Longley, the three centre-backs, Royale and Ben Davis, the two wing-backs, Perisic amongst the subs again, Skip and Hoybier in central midfield, Bentancur out for the rest of the season, Richarlison starts ahead of Son Heung-min, Kulishevsky on the right and Harry Kane, Tottenham's record goalscorer uh, as the Send a forward. Chelsea's team in just a second. Kulishevsky's won it for Tottenham inside his own half. Can't find Kane. Felix heavily involved for Chelsea early on. Plays it out wide to Chilwell, and he's quite happy just to scoop a little pass back to Koulibaly on the halfway line. Enzo Fernandez, deep line playmaker for Chelsea. Curling ball across to James. Finds Ziesch. Forward to James. The pass is behind him. Richarlison gets a touch and half clears, but only as far as Fernandez. And Fernandez finds Felix. I can see Chilwell just moving into a bit of space on the left Felix sees it as well Chilwell's given it to Sterling Sterling fancies a run at the Tottenham defenders again again he 
takes a tumble as he's tackled. Tottenham win it back. Nice pass through to Oliver Skip. He's got to be careful he doesn't lose it there. He's lost it. Loftus Cheeks back heel is picked up by Havertz here. And Havertz, 30 yards from goal in a central position. And an absolutely non stop start to this game. Five minutes in, nil nil. You did well to get the Chelsea team in there at the moment. <laughs> We've had no respite whatsoever. It's been a fantastic start by both teams. Tottenham sitting a little bit deeper, allowing Chelsea possession in front of them. We've so often seen Tottenham this season playing on the break and they're looking to do that again today. They sat quite deep, allowing Chelsea possession. Here comes Chelsea again, working the ball from left to right. Fernandez, low ball out to James. First time pass to Ziyech. Ziyech back to James. Here's Enzo Fernandez again. Chelsea all in blue white numbers on their backs playing from left to right in this first half and here's Chilwell Chilwell to Sterling Sterling came on at half time last week in the defeat against Southampton uh, and did impress despite not being able to find a way through for Chelsea they're pinging it around beautifully at the moment and Tottenham are, are chasing shadows if there were actually literal shadows on the field no sunshine above so not quite Chilwell just makes a little move inside plays it to Felix Felix central position 40 yards out finds Loftus cheek to Fernandez. Fernandez scoop pass looking for the run Felix on the volley gets a little poke on it goes wide goal kick for Tottenham good football well that was almost a carbon copy of the goal that they scored in the first half against West Ham from Joe Felix beautifully clipped ball over the top times his run Tottenham very much a back five out of possession but once that back five is breached Joe Felix just in at the far post can't quite connect it and Raheem Sterling was coming across he had two options there Felix he could have squared it to Sterling or get a shot on target he couldn't do either but to be fair to Chelsea it's been a very very positive start for them former England goalkeeper Paul Robinson with us here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium goalkeepers all over the airwaves on Five Live Sport this afternoon I'm not quite sure what's going on in the booking department we've heard from <laughs> Shea Given Talk a lot well. of sense, you see. Yeah, Rachel Brown Finnis as well ahead of this uh, game. Women's FA Cup fifth round underway. Chelsea attacking again. Manchester United's women now 3 0 up uh, on Durham in the fifth round of the FA Cup. Felix, I think he was caught late by Dyer there. Stuart Atwell spotted that. Was looking to play an advantage because the pass was away, but there wasn't much to be had there for Chelsea. So that will be a free kick. I'm going to do the Chelsea team. Here we go, Paul. <laughs> Kepper in goal. Uh, Reese James, Kula Bali, Thiago Silva, Ben Chilwell, Loftus Sheik and Enzo Fernandez uh, as the midfield two, Ziesch wide right, Sterling on the left, Felix, uh, who's looked really good at the start of this game, and Kai Havertz playing through the middle. The front four of Chelsea have looked excellent at the start with Havertz, Sterling, Felix, and Ziesch. They're kind of interchanging, there's no real number nine. Havertz out of the four will probably play that pivotal striker role when they're in possession, but all the, these three will be very, very fluid and they've, they've proved that already at the start and Tottenham have struggled to pick them up. Free kick for Chelsea, six wins in their last eight games against Tottenham in all competitions. The other two were draws. Rhys James curls it in, Christian Romero is down, holding his face inside the Tottenham penalty area. So I think Stuart Atwell's going to have to stop the game. The ball's gone out for a throw into Chelsea wide on the left, but because Romero's holding his face, we're going to have to have a stoppage and again I've got a feeling Paul it's going to be one of those games we're going to be looking at the monitor quite a bit for some off the ball incidents especially when Christian Romero is involved it normally it's the other way well, what's the chances of him having a slide tackle and catching somebody today yes. but there's a coming together at the far post I think it's him and Thiago Silva who does just lean on him a little bit he puts his arm across him I don't think there's any kind of real elbow intent there but that is one really to keep an eye on Romero's yeah. clearly picking up Thiago Silva on set plays and they're not they're not best of friends at the moment are they they're not lean is definitely the word and again I'm not sure it needed the reaction from Christian Romero Felix's corner in headed away by Dyer. Loftus cheek lobs a volley pass up in the air that's outrageous from Felix shoulders the ball over a Tottenham defender to Sterling Sterling's trying to win it back off Emerson Royale Royale stopped playing and said how about a free kick and then Stuart Atwell reacted and gave him the free kick he hadn't initially blown the whistle he's looking there Emerson Royale yeah there was, a, there was a coming together and he presumed that the referee was going to blow up he stopped it was on the right hand corner of the Spurs 18 yard box in a very very dangerous position had the referee not given him a free kick good to see Cesar at uh, here at the ground in a big blue Chelsea coat took that uh, nasty kick to the head in last week's defeat against uh, Southampton so he will eventually be on his way back for Chelsea but he is here and watching the game and I can see Graham Potter uh, down there uh, as well in the long black coat just trying to get some uh, information out to his players on the field they've got a throw 
right hand side of the field with 10 minutes into Tottenham Chelsea here on Five Live and BBC Sounds and at the moment it's nil nil and Rhys James has hit a ball into the Chelsea penalty area and Kepa's gone scurrying across his six yard box and fed it out to Ben Chilwell. Chilwell just speeds up to the halfway line, lays it off to Sterling, Felix. Little ball with the outside of the right foot to Sterling. It's a blur of blue movement at the moment. Felix goes down again. Kulishevsky challenge. Play continues. Kane on the turn on the halfway line. Richarlison making a run through the middle. Ben Davis getting forward as well. Davis heads it across to Richarlison. Richarlison just bumps into Thiago Silva, who was in exactly the right place for Chelsea. And it's a chance for Loftus Cheek to bring it away down the right. Hoybieg comes across to intercept for Tottenham. Uh, first bright spark by Tottenham there. Hurricane dropping in that deeper position, which you see him do more often than when he's playing with Kulusevski and Richarlison. Not necessarily so when he's playing with Richarlison because he occupies that number nine position. Kane takes the ball, plays a great ball across to this side by Ben Davis, and Richarlison goes into the centre and occupies the, the, the two central defenders. Had the conversation about Richarlison ahead of the game. Two goals for Tottenham so far. Both came in the same game in the Champions League group stages uh, against Marseille at the end of last year, yet to score in the Premier League for Tottenham. Can that change today? against Chelsea, Koulibaly up towards Felix, Dyer in quickly, wins the ball, Felix goes tumbling, no foul, Kane runs at Silva and again it's Silva, puts his foot in the way and stops Tottenham and suddenly Chelsea come on the counter, here's Ziyech, Ziyech forward to Havertz, Havertz on the corner of the Tottenham box, on the right for Chelsea, Eric Dyer in front of him, back to Ziyech, he's going to try and whip one in with his left foot, that's blocked at close range, Loftus cheeks slightly miscontrols, gets away with it and finds Chilwell on the left. Well, it's playing at a fantastic pace, isn't it? Both teams have set the stall out, clearly looking to score goals and win this game. Chelsea have had the better of the opening 10, 11 minutes, whatever we're into now. But Tottenham really do look dangerous on the break. They're snapping at Chelsea's heels in the right areas and looking to release Kulusevski and Richarlison when they get the opportunity. Manchester United's women have a fourth goal against Durham in the fifth round of the Women's FA Cup, heading towards the last 10 minutes uh, of that tie. There are... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six more kicking off at two o'clock, including our featured game, Chelsea against Arsenal. But it looks like Manchester United's women safely going through, leading Durham by four goals to nil. This one is Tottenham nil, Chelsea nil, but it's been a really entertaining start and not actually the kind of game I was necessarily expecting. Well, this is the first time I've seen Chelsea live for a couple of weeks and they certainly look much improved to the last time that I saw them. That's one thing you can say about this Graham Potter side. Against Dortmund in midweek, I thought they were unlucky. West Ham in the first half, I thought they were excellent. And the way that they've started today, the night and day to the last time that I watched them. Yeah, they do look sharp today, Chelsea, much better. Loftus-Cheek, Chilwell chests the pass down. Wide to Sterling, hugging the touchline. Two Tottenham players in front of them. Takes them both on, beats them both. Floats across up to the far post. Ziyech jumps, heads it back across goal. It bounces in front of Christian Romero. He takes his time. Low ball out to Kulishevsky on the right. It's going to take on Chilwell, flicks it through Chilwell's legs and keeps going. Great skills from Kulishevsky across to Kane. Support from Ben Davis on the left if you can find him. Looking promising for Tottenham. Davis takes one touch. Back to Kulishevsky on the edge of the area. Kane pops up beside him on the left. Kane drags it onto his left foot. Little nutmeg still going. He beat Rhys James brilliantly. And eventually, Chelsea got bodies in the way and have knocked it behind for a corner. Those, those were... Those were wonderful silky skills from Harry Kane with the ball at his feet there. And he's the one who started the move. Again, hitting Chelsea on the counter-attack. Kane starts it in midfield, plays a great ball out to Davis on this side. Kane ends up on the top left-hand side of the 18-yard box, takes it in, does a little dribble, takes four Chelsea defenders to stop him getting his shot away. He's not famed for his pace in the final third, but his feet were excellent. Thiago Silva's the player down. Thiago Silva was one of those bodies trying to get in the way to block the Kane shot, and he's down and seems to be in a, in a little bit of trouble, which will be a worry for Chelsea. I mean, that, that was that was Messi-esque from, from Kane. And like you say, Paul, it's, it's not what we associate him with necessarily, but there was the drag onto the left foot, saw James coming, then flicked it through his legs, very nearly got on the end of, the, of, of that little flick. It was fantastic close control, very, very clever movement of the body in the box. But that move itself showed us two sides to Harry Kane's game. When he dropped deep, he picked the ball up on the halfway line, played a brilliant ball out to Ben Davis, but he doesn't stop there. He continues and gets himself in the box, and that's how his game has developed. So concerns here for Chelsea, Thiago Silva still down receiving treatment. We're just getting another little look at the Silva and Romero confrontation earlier in the game where Silva's, you know, as we said, sort of lent his arm into Romero and Romero went down. I think the referee and the video assistant referee made a right call there. 
I mean, he, he's one he's one who is absolutely crucial to Chelsea, isn't he, Paul? When he can start, Thiago Silva at the back, such a reassuring presence. And, and given the, the form Chelsea are in and the problems Graham Potter has, I mean, he's not short of players to choose from, but he's trying to find the right settled lineup. He does not want to lose Thiago Silva. No, and the huge thing that Thiago Silva gives you is leadership qualities, especially with Asper Laqueta missing. Obviously, we've seen him here today, which is fantastic. But you look at the team, you look at the, the new players that he's brought in, you look at the blender players that he's trying to bring together, but you need leaders in that. You need somebody on the field that brings those players together around you. And Thiago Silva certainly does that. Tottenham nil, Chelsea nil. The two members of the medical staff haul Thiago Silva to his feet. What I love about this, Silva's got to go off the field <laughs> because he's been injured, but he's actually organising the rest of the defence for the corner before he leaves the pitch. He's walking off, limping, arm round a physio. Yeah. He was either moaning at the referee or shouting instructions. I think he was organising the defence, was. wasn't he? Don't you dare concede while I'm off the field. That's not what we do. He is saying to the rest of his teammates, corner for Tottenham coming here. Tottenham nil, Chelsea nil. Kulisewski getting ready to take it. It'll be an away swinger with his left foot. Tottenham's number 21 with his right arm in the air. Here it comes, delivery to the far post. Kane stretches out a leg and just pokes the ball back to Skip. Skip lobs it into the box. Kepa comes for a punch. Challenged by Romero, comes off Kepa. And the referee's actually given a goal kick. Tottenham don't agree. At the moment over on Radio 5 Sports Extra, it's full commentary, ball by ball of the World T20 final. This is the Women's World T20 final. Australia against South Africa. Adam Mountford can bring us up to date. Yeah, halfway stage of the Australian innings. They're 73 for one. Beth Mooney on 25 and Ash Garner, very dangerous player at number three, promoted up the orders on 27, two fours and two sixes. The wicket to go, that of Elisa Healy out for 18, slapping cap to De Klerk in the covers. Australia looking ominous, 73 for one after 10 overs, Ali. Thank you, Adam. In terms of uh, the England men's team, second test in Wellington at the close of the uh, third day. New Zealand, 202 for three in their second innings, trailing England by 24 runs having been bowled out for 209 in their first innings play will start again later tonight BBC Sport website for all the updates Thiago Silva back on Paul but you don't think he's going to continue no we've got a break in play because the referees lost communication with his linesman but Thiago Silva's just signalled across to Graham Potter on the bench and they're ready in a substitute he really doesn't look comfortable his teammates are telling him to go down but he's insisting on carrying on yeah. it was just when he blocked that shot from Harry Kane he's fantastic defence he comes across Harry Kane does it and he, it's actually Koulibaly that catches his right leg yeah. and it's his knee he's really not comfortable Graham Potter must be thinking, what on earth have I done to deserve this? As I say, not short of squad members. Badi Ashiel, of course, left out of the starting lineup today, is on the bench as a possible option. Here come Chelsea. Felix with the ball at his feet, might be opening up. Left footed drive straight at Forster. And he makes the save, pats it down in front of him and calmly picks the ball up in both hands. You'd expect Felix to test Forster more there. Chelsea hits Spurs on the break. Havertz does really, really well, puts Felix through. He gets the better of them, he's 18, 20 yards out, he's got a clear shot on goal with his left foot and he hits it straight down Forster's throat. Wesley Fafana will be the player coming on for Chelsea. Thiago Silva sat down, the play's continuing, I don't, does the referee need to stop? They know he's going to wave the medical team on. I think the Tottenham fans have got wise to this, they know exactly what Thiago Silva is, is doing there. He has gone down, we are going to get a change made and it's made the the rhythm of the game break up completely because it had been such an end-to-end -end, uh, lively opening start so Wesley Fofana who of course has had injury problems of his own 70 million pounds signing from Leicester in the summer has barely played any football for Chelsea this season he will come on to replace Thiago Silva and hopefully the game can can get back up to speed once Silva is off and Fofana is on but that's a big loss to Chelsea that is a big loss to Chelsea we, do, we touched on his leadership qualities and that's what he does bring to the side the size of the squad and the players that they've got the quality you've got you touched on Fofana's transfer fee there the, 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 the players that they've got yes they have got replacements but they haven't got that personality they haven't got that character Paul Robinson uh, with us here, BBC Radio 5 Live and BBC Sounds. The BBC Sounds app is going to be very useful to you this afternoon, actually, if you want to stay across all the sport, because uh, the Scottish League Cup final, Rangers against Celtic, full commentary from Radio Scotland available via the BBC Sounds app, and also France-Scotland in the Six Nations also kicks off at 3 o'clock. We'll have updates of that one here on 5 Live, but Radio Scotland Extra can bring you that in full. You can also find that uh, on the BBC Sounds app. Play is back underway, and Longley is playing the ball back to Eric Dyer. So 19 minutes in, Tottenham nil, Chelsea nil. Tottenham starting the day in fourth spot. Chelsea starting the day in tenth. A full 11 points behind Tottenham and only 10 points 
above the bottom three, so closer to the relegation zone than the Champions League zone. Hoybier, high ball away to the left. Davis heads it down into the path of Kane. Kane with his left foot gets that wrong, hooks it well wide and behind for a goal kick. Just drags his shot, Harry Kane, on his unfavoured left foot, but you never rule him out. The amount of goals he scored for Tottenham. Coming into this game, Tottenham will approach this in the same way, the manner that they played against Manchester City here. Chelsea, like Manchester City, are having the Lions share the possession, but Tottenham seem very calculated as to where they're pressing, what they're trying to do, hit them on the break. Manchester City came here, had a lot of the ball, and went away, been defeated 1-0, and it's a very, very similar game plan from Tottenham. Havertz find Sterling, Sterling speeding away down the left, Royale trying to get back there to help out Romero, Sterling steps inside and moves infield off that left flank, small figure, calls Enzo Fernandez towards him, gives it back to Sterling who looks full of running and confidence like Joao Felix at the start of this game, here's Chilwell, Chilwell to Havertz, Havertz little ball round the corner to Fernandez. Havertz continues to run wide on the left, so in the middle at the moment, Felix and Ziyech making his way to the far post. Havertz wants to try and win a corner, Romero's kept it in play, and that is cheeky. <laughs> He's knocked it through the legs of Havertz to find Everson Royale. Havertz thought he was going to play it straight, and he was coming in at the side angle, and Romero took a little risk, but that, uh, the fans enjoyed that. Oh, he's the coolest man in the stadium there, Romero. Havertz closes him down as oh. he comes to, he's just outside of the right foot, flicks it through his legs. I think we might get to see that one replayed a few times. You're not wrong. Manchester United as uh, women's five, Durham nil. A couple of minutes to go in the fifth round of the Women's FA Cup. Richarlison looking for a flick on inside his own half. Get up, says the referee. Hoybier takes it off Fernandez. doesn't have much support. Rhys James makes the challenge. Chelsea win it back. Flag is up for an offside as Felix controls it on the right. That'll be a free kick to Tottenham. We're almost midway through this first half. Still Tottenham nil, Chelsea nil. In terms of Premier League history, and I'm well aware there was football before the Premier League, but in terms of this rivalry in the Premier League, 61 games between these two, Tottenham have only won seven of them, Paul. Oh, I hate it's to, amazing. I, I hate to add to your stat, but they've won more against Spurs than any other team that they've played against in their Premier League history. 33 times Chelsea yeah. beaten Spurs in the Premier League. Yeah, it doesn't make pretty reading uh, for Tottenham fans, and that's why they're always so concerned about this particular fixture. Here's James. And it's a huge fixture for the fans, you know, there's a, a lot made about the, the North London derby, which is possibly, probably is the biggest fixture, but this comes very, very close. Yeah. There's, you know, the, the passion and the, the, the intent and the want to win the, the, the Arsenal game and the North London derby, but this really isn't far behind it. And I think for, for a section of fans, this is as big. Tottenham want to throw wide on the right, Emerson Royale, who was the hero last weekend with the opening goal, brilliant opening goal as well, both wing-backs involved, Davis's pass through to Royale to give Tottenham the lead against West Ham, finds Richarlison, who's not had much to do in the first half, he's looking for long lay there, can't find him, then goes rushing in to try and take the ball off Rhys James, clatters into him and concedes the free kick, Chelsea free kick on the edge of their own penalty area. And this new signing, Emerson Royale, that Spurs have had for the last three weeks has been fantastic, hasn't he? he? I mean, where's he been all this time? He's a funny one, isn't he, Paul? Because he's he's got that almost sort of cult hero status in a way, partly because some performances have been so wretched in a funny sort of way, and then and then there's brilliance at the other end of the scale at times. I don't mean this in a derogatory way in any way, shape or form. He reminds me very similar to Pascal Chimbonda. He's really? capable of brilliance and mistakes. Been beaten by Chilwell on the outside, gets back at Chilwell, does fabulously well for Tottenham, does Emerson Royale, the man in question, can Seeds the corner. I thought Chilwell had got past him there. Well, that's the two sides to Emerson Royale. Defensive vulnerability, Chilwell does really well, gets past him. But then, this is the new Emerson Royale. He gets back goal side of Ben Chilwell and does really, really well. Gets his body across him and concedes a corner. Corner for Chelsea. Tottenham nil. Chelsea nil. And Hakim Ziyech uh, is over there in front of plenty of Tottenham fans. The giant stands towering up into the sky above him the huge golden cockerel above that goal that Tottenham are defending away to our right Ziyech real pace on the corner Richarlison flicks the header away skip with a stooping header to try and get it away for Tottenham Sterling has it on the right though cross comes in Kane's header clear only to the edge of the box and Loftus-Cheek plays it out to Sterling again on the right Sterling tries to knock it through the legs of Richarlison the ball's not going to go out of play Sterling strong knocks Richarlison to the floor little dummy finds Loftus-Cheek edge of the box Fernandez shot and that's well blocked by Romero that might have been heading for the bottom corner skip is happy just to smash the ball away upfield and Koulibaly's got to be a bit careful here Kulisha behind him but he nods the ball back to Kepa 
That's an interesting one from a Tottenham point of view because they're marked zonally from corners. There's only one man that, you, that they have man-marked. So when the ball does clear the box and then the ball's put back into the box from Chelsea, Tottenham are looking around to see who they have to mark. They're still in their zones. So Chelsea are quite often finding that they've got three players there on the second ball into the box after a corner. Nick Godwin, our producer here this afternoon, has just pointed out that in the absence of Thiago Silva, Reese James has been appointed Chelsea captain out there on the field now. Ziyech plays the ball to Enzo Fernandes, another who settled quickly and well for Chelsea, one of the many signings in the January transfer window. But as we know, the results haven't quite been coming. No win in the last five games and just one goal in the 1-1 against West Ham, and that was from... Joao Felix. Felix to Chilwell, wide on the left. Here's Sterling. The football's been good, but can they find some goals this afternoon, Chelsea? Well, that's a huge thing. I mean, it's been well, well documented and well talked about all this money they've spent. Why haven't they got a striker? I mean, six goals in the last 14 in all competition for a, for a team like Chelsea is incredible. It's not for the want of creating chances because you look at the amount of chances they created against Dortmund. Richarlison's gone down. He was tugged back by Ziyech. I think it was a foul, but it was quite a dramatic fall again. I think we're going to see a fair bit of that throughout the game this afternoon, so the officials need to be on their toes. Uh, Eric Dyer's got the ball at his feet inside the Tottenham penalty area. 20 minutes to play in the first half. Back to Wembley at half-time with Steve Crossman. We'll continue to build up to the League Cup final. Don't miss any of that this afternoon. Stephen Warner, Ben Mee, uh, John Murray, Ian Dennis. They'll be your two commentators for the game. Manchester United against Newcastle. Chris Sutton and Robbie Savage taking the calls on 6.06 tonight. Uh, after that one, here's Kane. Kane's low ball into the feet of Emerson Royale, who's in a midfield position. He's about 40 yards from the Chelsea goal. Goes wide right to Kuliszewski. Back it comes to Hoybier. Hoybier strokes his pass here to Longley. Longley couldn't quite make his mind up. Look left, has gone right to Dyer. Hoybier involved again. Romero up the middle to Kane. Good movement from Kane. Just holds off Koulibaly and plays it to Richarlison. They almost get in each other's way. Richarlison's 1-2 with Skip. Finds Hoybier. Shot deflected. Comes back off the post. And Reese James is there to clear for a corner. That's the closest we've come. That's a great strike by Hoiberg. It just takes the deflection and Kepa's beating all ends up. He just stands and watches the ball go. It's Harry Kane again. He's so difficult to mark. He's so difficult to pick up with the areas that he finds himself in. Richarlison just nicks the ball across to Hoiberg. And I'm looking to see there. Is it Koulibaly who comes across and makes a brilliant block? Is, is it Reese James? Fafana. Fafana it is. It is. Fafana. Fafana makes a full-length block on Hoiberg's strike because he was heading for the bottom corner. And just as he makes a strike, Fafana throws himself full length and catches him on the bottom of the studs. What a fantastic block that is by Fafana. He's just come on the pitch. Richarlison's just picking himself to his feet. He was hurt in the build-up and is limping a little here. Tottenham waiting to take their corner and Kuliszewski is going to go across and take that. Now, Hoybier was a goal scorer in the 2-2 at Stamford Bridge very early on in the season back in August. A goal that Chelsea weren't happy with at the time because they felt a player had been fouled in the build-up. Chelsea actually dominated that game. It finished 2-2. Kane scored a 96th minute equaliser uh, in that game. Corner for Tottenham. Kuliszewski's delivery in. Glancing header across the face of goal. Kane's there to collect. A little bit too much on the pass back to Hoybier. He's chased by Felix finds Emerson Royale and he's got space to work with in the middle of the Chelsea half plays across to Kane Kane with the slick back hair as always ball forward to Emerson Royale intercepted by Reese James Richarlison comes chasing back he's going to catch James that could be a yellow card it's got to be a foul will it be a yellow card let's wait and see or will it be a final warning Harry Kane's come across to have his say as well I think the referee's just having a word with Harry Kane and saying, look, that's, that's the last one for Richarlison. If he has another one, he's going into the book. But Harry Kane's been exceptional. It's just the areas that he finds himself of. He's so difficult to pick up for these Chelsea centre-halves. Koulibaly and Fafana, they don't know where they're to go in with him. At times there, he picked the ball up, Harry Kane, inside his own half. And Richarlison and Kulazewski were the two furthest Spurs players forward at the Chelsea back line. I think Richarlison's a little bit lucky there not to go in the book. Cynical challenge, knew what he was doing. Didn't really have any intention of playing the ball, did he, Paul? <laughs> no. I think we've seen that a few times before, haven't we? <laughs> I think the referee's done really well. I think he knows what type of game it's going to be, mm. and he's let it flow as much as he can. It's Paul Robinson here on Five Live uh, and BBC Sounds. Tottenham nil, Chelsea nil. Fafana in the game because Thiago Silva's gone off injured in the first half. Missed control from Rhys James. Paul stayed in play, apparently. Hakim Ziyech stopped playing for a second there. Ben Davis has it. His clearance is then blocked by Ziyech. Comes back to Longley. Longley plays into his own penalty area. 
Here's Forster, Tottenham's keeper. Clears with his left foot. Richarlison's flick on, looking for Kane. It's beyond Kane. And Koulibaly able to control and just tow it forward to Fernandez. Fernandez finds Felix. Felix's first time ball beyond Chilwell. Big roars from the Tottenham fans. It goes straight out for a throw into their team. And that's one thing I've noticed what Chelsea have clearly worked on. When the ball does go back to Fraser Forster, Havertz cuts off his right foot. So you see Romero drop deep to give Fraser Forster an option, but Havertz immediately cuts that off and makes Forster play it long with his left foot. Hoidier back to the goalkeeper, Forster. Hugo Lloris still out injured at the moment. So Forster, that giant figure all in yellow away to our right. Up towards Richarlison, not strong enough to hold off Rhys James. James to Fernandez. Hoybier's caught Fernandez as he was trying to get to that ball. Apologises for the challenge. That'll be a free kick to Chelsea. We've played half an hour. Fernandez picks himself up and takes the free kick outside of his right boot. Swerves a pass to Chilwell. Felix runs into Emerson Royale. Wants a free kick and doesn't get the decision. Here come Tottenham down the right with Kuliszewski. Kane's waiting in the middle. Kuliszewski, Fernandez. Dived in there, Kuliszewski found Royale, Tottenham have won a corner. Yeah, feels he's a little bit hard done to, does Joao Felix. He's had a couple of instances where he thought he might have a free kick, but the referees let a lot go today, and I think we're going along the new guideline have been a bit more tolerant, which it's good, it's, it's a good game to watch. Tottenham thought about the quick corner there, they might go again here, yes they will, Emerson Royale dummy to run away, and now he does get the ball from Kuliszewski, cross comes in, high swinging one to the back post, header is won by Chelsea, Hoybier will get to the loose ball for first, but he's got to turn and play all the way back into his own half to the goalkeeper Forster, who's a man alone inside that Tottenham half. High clearance, dropping near the edge of the Chelsea box. Rhys James wins the first header, it falls to the feet of Hoybier. Hoybier to Romero, Romero on the run forward, Kane to his left, Kane scoop pass, looking for Romero. Rhys James with an overhead clearance away, comes off his boot and actually spins accidentally into the arms of his goalkeeper, Kepa. <laughs> Romero there finds himself in the number nine position from the corner. He didn't didn't track back. Harry Kane gets the ball. And Romero's not afraid to have a little dribble in the opposition box. Right, this is trouble for Chelsea now because Wesley Fofana is down hurt. No one wants to see this given the problems he's had with injuries so far this season. Um, he's rubbing his... How are we describing that, Paul? His hind. Hind, thank you very much. Perfect. <laughs> yes. I think it might be a dead leg. He looks to be OK. Hind quarter, exactly. Uh, Manchester United's women through to the fifth round of the Women's FA Cup. They've beaten Durham by five goals to nil. The two o'clock kickoffs are underway. Flo Pollock will be bringing us updates of Chelsea uh, against Arsenal to catch up on all today's football. If you miss any of it, Football Daily Podcast, make sure you subscribe to that uh, via the BBC Sounds app. I mentioned the, uh, the score in the Test match over in Wellington. Test match special pod there for your ears on the Sounds app at the moment as well. And the Rugby Union daily as ever during Six Nations weeks is well worth subscribing to as well. France, Scotland kicks off at three o'clock this afternoon. We'll bring you updates here on Five Live. Commentary available via the Sounds app. Kepper getting booed and jeered. Took his time to clear and Harry Kane has given him a nudge as he cleared. Kepper's gone down Kane holding his face. Kane could be in trouble. Do you think you know? so? Yeah. He's gone right across the goalkeeper. Prior to that instance there where you were reading that out, Kepa took the ball back and he stood on the ball for ages and he refused to play as though he was wasting time, which obviously didn't go down well with the Spurs crowd. He got the ball at his feet here and he's cleared it and Harry Kane's just gone across him. Oh, he's, he's nudged him, he's given him a nudge. I thought he'd gone across his face, but he hasn't. He's actually shoulder barged Kepa just after he's hit it, but kepper has gone down holding his face like he's been struck in the face. He clearly hasn't when we're that watching it on the replay. It was a shoulder barge, it was unnecessary by Kane, it wasn't needed, but the goalkeeper's made it look awful. Right, that's your second contender. Chelsea got two in for the simulation game tonight. Definitely a foul, and you're right, Kane was, Kane was a bit annoyed and it was a little bit naughty, but he's caught him on the back of the shoulder and Kepa's put his left hand to his face as if he was caught in the face. Again, officials not buying it. And all he's succeeded in doing is Kepa is really riling this crowd up and making it a fantastic atmosphere now. 12 minutes left in the first half. Tottenham nil. Chelsea nil. Yep, there we go. Kepa's on the ball. <laughs> He's going to get that for the rest of the game. Enzo Fernandez, loose ball. Emerson Royale in. Challenged by Koulibaly. Tottenham want a free kick. They're not going to get it. 
And Chelsea are allowed to continue playing. Kepper slings it out to Reese James. James charging away down the right. Ziyech trying to find him with a return pass. The ball breaks to Richarlison. Hoybierg available on his left. Kane waiting in the middle. If Tottenham can work it to him, they can. He's still a way out. Emerson Royale is there to his right. Just outside the box. Great defending from Sterling. Back to take the ball off Royale. And Kepper side foots a first time pass out to the left. And Havertz is there. And he's going to play to Koulibaly. And Koulibaly is going to side foot it towards Sterling. And Sterling will hold off skip. And then Havertz will make the run. And Romero comes flying in for a 50 50. The ball comes off Havertz. And that's a throw in for Tottenham. This is tasty. Yeah, this has just really lit the touch paper, hasn't it? And Romero's just gone flying into a challenge there and won his team a throw in. We I mean, never heard a throw in cheered so much. It really is intensity on the pitch now. Romero now down on his back. Tottenham had taken the throw. The referee stopped the game. Romero's going to need some treatment, which gives us time uh, to check in on the women's FA Cup. Fifth round, Chelsea, Arsenal just underway. Here's Flo Pollock. Yep, underway here. Chelsea are the FA Cup holders, but no team has won it more than Arsenal. Lauren James starts for Chelsea, fresh from scoring her first England goal over the international break. A boost for Arsenal as Leah Volti returns to midfield. And Arsenal have started brightly having an early shot on goal from Frida Marlon, and they're struggling to find goals at the moment, but there must be a winner today. No replays. Two, five minutes in, it is Chelsea nil, Arsenal nil. Thank you, Flo. Tottenham nil, Chelsea nil here uh, in the Premier League. Tottenham starting the day in fourth spot in that race for Champions League football next season, uh, which they managed to achieve by finishing fourth last season, having missed out for a couple of seasons uh, prior to that. Players back underway, Royale to Romero. Romero to Dyer on the edge of his own box. Easy pass for him, finds Longley. Longley to Richarlison, looks for Longley again. Ben Davis trying to get involved, falls over. Longley continues to chase into the Chelsea half. Fafana clears hurriedly up towards Sterling. The ball comes off Sterling's heel and falls to Royale. Royale running with the ball inside his own half. Again, it opens up on the left for Tottenham. Uh, here's Longley. Up to the halfway line, played to Hoybierg. Havertz back to put him under pressure. Wide to Davis. Davis infield to Skip. Kulishevsky's in a bit of space on the right. Skip goes through the middle. Oh, Fafana fancied that. In on Kane quickly and wins the ball. Tottenham fans baying for a free kick. Chelsea have it back. That was brilliant by Fafana. You just see the ball going to Kane's feet and he's read it so well. He goes into the back of Kane, but he gets the ball. It's a fantastically timed challenge. Both teams, when they're out of possession, defensively look very, very solid. Chelsea with Fernandes and Loftus-Cheek protecting the back four. And Spurs drop into a five now when they're out of possession as they are. Chelsea comfortable possession and Spurs a bank of five and four. Nice to see Wesley Fafana playing some football for Chelsea. Uh, obviously at the expense of Thiago Silva today, which we didn't want to see. The great Brazilian off injured. Havertz challenged by Dyer. Havertz is ball back to Koulibaly. First time from him to Chilwell and wide it goes to Sterling. Sterling sets off on a Maisy Daisy dribble, trying to beat Royale. Little ball into the near post. Felix slides in, controls it, picks himself up. It eventually comes off him and goes behind for a goal kick. Latest on the Women's World T20 final. Australia against South Africa, Adam Mountford. 1-1-1 one, one, one for three in the 16th. Dangerous Ash Gardner holding out for 29 of Troyon. Big hitting Grace Harris, bold swinging across the line to Malaba for 10. Beth Mooney still there on 42 though. Australia 1-1-1 one, one, one for three. Tottenham nil, Chelsea nil. Tottenham playing out from the back here and Raheem Sterling trying to close down Romero. He's done well, Sterling. I've been impressed with him because he's not played a lot of football um, at the moment. He come into the team and come on as a substitute. Played today both defensively and offensively has impressed me today. Kane's not got his good buddy Son Heung Min out there today, but he's developing a very nice link up with Emerson Royale. Lots of passes finding uh, the Brazilian. Chip forward by this Brazilian Richarlison. Royale challenges for the ball on the corner of the Chelsea box. Chilwell tries to take it away from him. And again, Royale fully committed in with a thunderous challenge and it goes out for a throw into Chelsea. For those Chelsea fans, Paul, that recently have been sort of making constructive criticism, shall we say, uh, of the team under Graham Potter, I think this performance and some of the football they've played, particularly going forward in the first half, will have given them a bit of heart. Listen, you, as, as footballers and managers, you expect criticism. I mean, that's what we, we you, you do in the media. You ask for your honest opinion. You know, and football fans now are more knowledgeable than they've ever been because of the access to games and the footage that they've got. But, you know, when you see a Chelsea side play like this, you see work in progress. And like I said to you earlier, this is definitely a different Chelsea side to the one that I saw four or five weeks ago and the one that's, that played in the first half against West Ham. There is a lot to take from that, but we are in a results business. And if he's not getting results and he's not getting regular performances, you know, he's, he's under no illusions he's going to come under pressure into the last 10 minutes of the first half still goalless between 
Tottenham and Chelsea. And here's Longley. Longley back to Forster, who's matched his uh, all-yellow goalkeeping outfit with white gloves and white boots. Skip under pressure, does really well to turn away from Sterling. Lays it off to Hoybier, gets support from Longley. Longley crosses the halfway line, chased by Loftus-Cheek, uses Ben Davis. Davis back to Hoybier. Hoybier plays a little one-two with Skip. Comes wide to Davis again. Davis moves infield. Ziyech has him covered, so back it comes to Hoybier, then to Dyer, and across to Christian Romero. Romero, little sideways pass to Skip across the halfway line. Exchanges another quick one-two with Kuliszewski. Now, Hoybier brings it forward 15 yards. Wide to Longley on the left, patient from Tottenham, looking to try and find the crucial gap. Kuliszewski's calling for it from Skip, doesn't get it. It's back with Hoybier, inside left channel, about 50 yards from goal. Wide to Davis. Davis looks for Kane. Back to goal, edge of the area. Runs into a spot of bother, Kane. Oh, Ziyech has given it away to Richarlison. Richarlison into the Chelsea box. Hits the right-footed shot. It's well wide. Goal kick, Chelsea. Gives it away in the wrong area there, Ziyech. Harry Kane does really, really well. Puts it into Richarlison. Opens himself up from a wide position. Do well to beat Kepa from that type of angle. But again, it's showing intent from Spurs. It's been a really, really good game, actually, yeah. without any real goal mouth incident, hasn't it? Apart from Hoiberg hitting the post, you can't really remember a clear-cut chance that either team have had. But actually, as a spectacle, 40 minutes into the game, it's been a fantastic watch. It's had a bit of everything. Uh, women's FA Cup, fifth round, two o'clock kickoffs. Goal for Lewis against Cardiff Ladies. Lewis women one, Cardiff Ladies nil. Still Chelsea nil, Arsenal nil. Kepa getting more stick because he's delaying the restart here, or the Tottenham fans feel he is. Stuart Atwell does as well, gives him a, a big hurry up with a wave of the right arm. Richarlison jumps, beaten in the air by Havertz, cleared by Longley. Rhys James chests it down, side foots a pass to Fernandez. His ball half blocked by Hoybierg, skipping on Fernandez, caught Fernandez, yeah, free kick for Chelsea. Just arrived a millisecond too late. I don't understand the time-wasting angle from Kepa because it's clearly a tactic or clearly something that either he's been told or his thought taken upon himself to do. But Chelsea play better when they've got the ball on the ground and they're attacking Spurs and they're trying to play quick-flowing football. Then he's not looking to set to set the team up for a long ball or to hit Fernandez or to hit Havertz on the long ball or Sterling on a diag. So as to why he's taking so long to play the ball out, I don't get it. That's the voice of Paul Robinson. Tottenham nil, Chelsea nil. Closing in on half-time, mouth-watering prospect of a League Cup final for you on Five Live this afternoon. Manchester United against Newcastle United at Wembley. Steve Crossman and the team are there. Here's Koulibaly. Koulibaly to Fernandez. Pace on the pass to Sterling. Back to Fernandez. Sterling runs into space and can't control the return ball. But again, the movement and the ideas are, are good. Throw in from Tottenham to Skip. Skip flicks it forward. Off target. Nowhere near Kane. Koulibaly is able to control it and play back to Fafana. Fafana stands there cheekily, just sort of standing on the left leg with the ball balanced underneath the studs of his right boot. Then Fernandez has a little rollover with his right foot, doing exactly the same thing, trying to draw Skip in towards him. Back to Koulibaly. Cross here to Fafana. Ziyech wide on the right, right on the touchline beneath us. Loftus cheek to Fernandez. Fernandez already looking for the next pass, and that ball's to Chilwell. Chilwell, short ball to Sterling. Walking pace at the moment, back to Fernandez inside the Tottenham half though, Loftus-Cheek, and again back they come, recycle it, Koulibaly to Fernandez. Fernandez tries to run past Kuliszewski, Loftus-Cheek opens it to the right, to James, to Ziyech. Ben Davis quickly on to Ziyech, Ziyech forced backwards, plays back to Fafana, oh he's taken a risk there, but he's beaten Kane and Richarlison. Oh brilliant, brilliant by Fafana. Drop of the shoulder, a little glide away from both the Tottenham attackers. Lovely ball from Ziyech, wide to Sterling. Chilwell trying to give him support. Sterling moves inside, hits the right foot, his shot. Flying save from Forster and Ben Davis clears it. And out for a throw in for Chelsea. Oh, well, that's the danger that Sterling brings on that left-hand side. Cutting inside on his right foot. Gets in behind Raheem, but in behind Emerson Royal quite easily. Offside. Oh, we, we, get, we always get excited and then they're offside play. I hate it when the linesmen do that. Oh, no. We all get excited about a, a passage of play and then you, when you know it's going to go up the offside flag. But he does so well there, Sterling. Forster does well, actually, because Havertz is in front of him and he just takes a slight deflection and that's what he put the offside flag up for. I don't think it was Sterling that was offside. Yeah. I think it was Havertz that was in front of the goalkeeper because Forster, at first glance, seemed to make a decent save, but the ball fell at his feet. And actually, when you watch the replay, he's made a real mess of it because Havertz was right in front of him and he didn't see it. <laughs> Romero 
cool as a cucumber again floated ball across his own penalty area finds Dyer. Dyer down the left to long lay last couple of minutes of the first half here on five live and bbc sounds and here's cs forward for chelsea looking to find felix on the right Dyer thought about making a challenge stands off felix tries to dart between richarlison and Dari's one chelsea a late corner in this first half and eric Dyer just to try and prevent them taking a quick one just gives the replacement ball sitting on the little plastic cone a little clip so it bobbles away but Chelsea don't look too interested in hurrying this they're going to set themselves up for a for a set play it just looks so blatantly obvious that they lack a number nine doesn't it I mean the interchange the play the final third they, they, they feel afraid it looks like they're afraid to make that final pass or to make that final decision to be the one to lose the ball they'd rather turn out and play it square and keep the ball than take the opportunity but if they had that figurehead they had that striker I, I just get the feeling it would be different Aubameyang is on the bench not been involved for the last four games he is on the bench this afternoon for Chelsea right at the end of the first half here Tottenham fans nervously watching this Chelsea corner Chilwell's delivery to the far post Royale heads it up in the air drops down Dyer's there another header from Royale Royale goes for it again Koulibaly gets it for Chelsea though nods it wide to Sterling he slips that'll be a throw in for Tottenham and Oliver Skip just says to Royale slow down let's take our time how much added time three minutes of added time at the end of this first half and again like you say Paul on the face of it I think you know if people hadn't heard it or seen it or were aware of it you'd see Tottenham nil Chelsea nil and you think mm, sounds a bit bit ordinary a bit cagey that it's, it's not it's not been that has it although they've not been loads of clear-cut chances either I think both managers if it stays this like this in the last two minutes will go in at half time very very happy with the way that the team played yeah they both clearly had a game plan Chelsea to dominate possession play high up and Spurs to play on the counter-attack as they're trying to do now Kane to long lay long lay running away from Fernandez making a break into the middle of the Chelsea half finds Skip Skip to his left finds Kane very deep here Kane 40 yards out good pass though Kuliszewski onto the left foot little flick ball for Farnas in the way Kane was making the diagonal run that's who Kuliszewski was looking for Chelsea have cleared it and Havertz runs into trouble Hoybier does enough for Tottenham Richarlison then fouled rather crudely by Ziyech Richarlison doesn't like it gets up and throws his body into Ziyech Ziyech is going to get a yellow card here Tottenham, oh hang on, Ziyech I think has caught Emerson Royale in the face, I think he threw an arm out there, now Royale has gone down holding his face but I think I saw something there, there was a lot of reaction, a lot of players coming in to defend their teammates, the initial challenge was going to be a yellow card for Ziyech, I wonder if Ziyech might be in real trouble now here Paul Robinson. Well VAR and the referees and the officials on the field have got a lot to, to sort out here, but as the referee turned his back there was a few stray bumps and a few stray arms and the referee's back was turned there was a few players getting given each other a warning the referees now stood talking to his assistant here on the near side but I'm sure that VAR will be looking at this very closely and they really have got to pick the bones out of this Christopher Kavanagh leading the team at Stockley Park everything's calmed down for now it was Ziyech's challenge on Richarlison that led to the flare-up Ziyech was going to get booked Richarlison picked himself up and knocked his body into Ziyech but it's the Ziyech sort of arm out on Emerson Royale that interests me right who's that Havertz Havertz getting booked <laughs> he doesn't know where he's going the referee does he's no. walking around he's looking for <laughs> Ziyech isn't he no where's he coming he's coming to Royale oh, he's going to Emerson Royale isn't he he's coming to Royale so Havertz has got a booking Emerson Royale is being spoken to by Stuart Atwell here conversation between the pair unless he feels Emerson Royale made a meal of it of the contact and maybe it was the Havertz arm I saw and not a Ziyech arm so Royale is booked but Ziyech must have been booked for the challenge as well on Richarlison that led to the whole thing do you know what going back to the original incident yes it was a foul yes it wasn't a great tackle on Richarlison but Richarlison didn't need to react the way that he no. did and he instigated that by standing up and going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ziyech and by that they yeah. started the whole melee right we'll keep an eye on our little Premier League app here and see the yellow cards come ticking up when they do at the moment it's still being sorted out down there on the field added time is up maybe it was the habit oh, here we go we're having a little look at the monitor there it's that one Ziyech I'm sh he slaps Royale in the face. Yeah, Emerson Royale runs into the back of Ziyech behind the referee's back and pushes yeah. him as to go, as to nudge him away. Right. And Ziyech doesn't like it. No. He goes to push him, but he doesn't really make no. contact. The intent's there, yeah. but he doesn't make contact with Emerson Royale. Yeah, I've, I've misseen that. He's brushed his shoulder and then his hand has sort of gone on into his cheek and Royale's made a, a lot of it. But hang on, VAR, those three letters have gone up on the four big screens in the corners of the ground here so they're clearly 
looking at something. Havertz, Roy Allen, Ziyech booked so far, but the video assistant referee has had a look at something here. Comes red off. card! Ziyech does get the red card for that reaction, that arm that was thrown out to Emerson Royale. It glanced his shoulder, went on into his cheek, and the camera immediately, here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, focuses on the embattled Chelsea manager Graham Potter who has not been helped out by Hakim Ziyech there he's taking his time leaving the field and the referee now where's he going off to the monitor well the referee sent him off right and as he's about to leave the field he's told him to wait there he said stop so as we stand now Ziyech has been sent off yet the referee's told him to stay on the pitch Stuart Atwell is now on the far side of the pitch looking at the incident so Which what happens is Emerson Royal nudges him in the back and Ziyech then throws an arm towards Emerson Royale which is completely wrong he doesn't make contact but the intent is there he makes contact with his shoulder but but this check being done on the monitor should have been done before Stuart Atwell showed the red card because now if he if he thinks he's got it wrong he's gonna have to withdraw the red card this has got very messy at the end of the first half players surrounding the referee Stuart Atwell is on his way back now across the field towards Hakim Ziyech who is still on the pitch he's taking his time here to make his final decision Surely he's not going to change his mind and withdraw the red card. He's just said something. He's just said something in Ben Chilwell's ear, and Ben Chilwell's run off and said to his teammates, "He's okay. He's going to give me yellow." So he's taken away the red card that he was told to give. It's gone back to a yellow for the initial challenge. That must be for the initial challenge. So it's nothing for the push on the shoulder that went into Royale's face. Royale made a meal of it, but surely Atwell shouldn't have lifted the red card before he'd gone to the monitor to check it for himself that is really confusing isn't it i think tune into the match of the day tonight so you sort that one out for yourself <laughs> good luck fellas half past 10 <laughs> bbc one and so graham potter breathes a massive sigh of relief well that is a really oh, strange situation now they've just shown the incident on the big screen around the ground and you can hear the reaction from the Tottenham fans as well there wasn't masses in it from Ziyech it was Richarlison that started it but when you put your hand up like that you run the risk the, v the VAR has clearly suggested red card which is why Stuart Atwell's given the red card and then he's thought no I better go and check it he's put his arm well he's not put his arm up he's gone to swipe Emerson Royale yeah. he's missed him and hit his shoulder but the intent to to swipe at an opponent was there so he's, he's initially sent him off which I, I think was probably the right decision but then he's gone to look, to look at the monitor yeah. but surely he's got to look at the monitor first absolutely no? Paul but do we, do we think do we think they've got the right decision in the end should that have been a red card I think both managers will disagree from a Tottenham point of view I think <laughs> Listen, he's, he's performed the action, so yes, it's a red card. OK. But it was a red card initially shown. It's been taken away. Both teams playing with 11 men. Tottenham nil, Chelsea nil. And again, it's one of those. I mean, Howard Webb's going to have more questions to answer. It's, it's VAR's not the problem there. It's the use of the VAR that's caused the problem and all the confusion. Ziyech's ball into the box. Good one for 6.06 .06 tonight, obviously. Just you wait for the booze when this half-time yeah, whistle goes. Yeah, you're not wrong. The atmosphere in this stadium will be electric when this half-time whistle goes. Yeah. It will not be a comfortable walk to the tunnel for the referee. Ball out wide to Rhys James. Tottenham have hit the post in this first half and Fraser Forster has made the save from Raheem Sterling again you know the VAR it's not true and it's not real and it's not fact it's somebody's opinion yeah. the referee's opinion on the field was changed by somebody else's opinion yeah. who was watching the VAR and then the referee had to go make a combined opinion with somebody else yeah. I think it's not fact is it no they've got the protocol wrong there I think in terms of the events leading up to the showing of the red card and that's why Stuart Atwell rather embarrassingly had to come back and withdraw the red card here's Kuliszewski oh that's a great run outside of his left foot to Ben Davis Davis up to the edge of the box bobbling pass can't find Richarlison or Kane it's right in between them Koulibaly clears and right on cue as Paul Robinson predicted booze ring round the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium I think from both sets of fans utter confusion at the end of the first half really good game of football Tottenham has struck the post Forster made the save Ziyech saw a red card that was then withdrawn try and sum that up in 20 seconds if you can Paul Robinson incredible great game of football but I think the, what you said is the protocol was wrong the referee has sent the player off without looking at the screen then looked at the screen and thought he righted his own wrong decision when I think actually it's a red card it's a fantastic game of football that's been marred at the end little bit shambolic at the end of the first half but come and join us for the second half because uh, i think it's going to be good tottenham nil chelsea nil steve
We will. Ali, Paul, thank you very much for the time being. What an absolute mess at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. We've had a goal, though, in the Women's FA Cup, that game between Chelsea and Arsenal. Flo Pollock. Chelsea have taken the lead, Steve. A nice run from Lauren James. She found Sophie Ingle in the penalty box, who slotted it home somewhat against the run of play. Midway through the first half, it's Chelsea 1, Arsenal 0. Wicket in the Women's World T20 final, Adam Mountford. Over to go of the Australian innings. They're 144 for four. And the Australian captain, Meg Lalling, has been brilliantly caught on the deep square leg boundary by Tryon, giving Marisan Kapp a second wicket. Well worth, worth watching that on the in-play highlights over on the BBC Sport website and app. Mooney's still going strong on 63. With her is Elise Perry on seven. 144 for four with an over to go. We're here at Wembley Stadium ahead of the League Cup final. Full commentary at 4.30 of Newcastle United against Manchester United. We're going to hear from Sean Longstaff. We'll be joined by the former Newcastle defender Seb Basson and our senior football reporter Ian Dennis after the news on Five Live with Stuart Clarkson. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio Five Live. Steve, thank you. Good afternoon. The bodies of more than 40 migrants have been found on a beach in southern Italy after their boat broke up in rough seas. Around 80 people survived and a search and rescue operation is continuing. Initial reports suggest those on the boat included people from Iran, Pakistan and Afghanistan. The government's hinted that politicians in Northern Ireland could be given new powers as part of a fresh deal on post-Brexit trading arrangements. The Deputy Prime Minister Dominic Raab says the UK is on the cusp of securing a new settlement with Brussels. Mr Raab also told the BBC he will resign if an inquiry finds that he bullied civil servants. Eight formal complaints have been made against him. The former Environment Secretary George Eustace says he expects shortages of some fruit and vegetables to last for three or four weeks. The government's blamed bad weather in Spain and North Africa for the issues that have left some supermarket shelves empty. And thousands of people in Australia have paid their respects to Olivia Newton-John at a state memorial service in Melbourne. The singer and actress died from breast cancer last year, aged 73. BBC Sounds. For a fresh take on the news, join me, Adam Fleming. And me, Chris Mason, on Newscast. Every time I looked at my phone, there was another pretty huge revelation. We've got loads of special guests joining the podcast to help us understand what's really going on with the latest stories. The arithmetic can be so numbing when you hear millions are affected. Go behind the headline hype with our podcast every weekday. This has been an unprecedented shock. Newscast. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is Five Live Sport with Steve Crossman. And we have second half commentary of Tottenham Chelsea on the way here on Five Live Sport. We're also continuing the build up to the League Cup final. Our senior football reporter Ian Dennis has joined us. Ian, we're in the comfy seats at Wembley Stadium. Yeah, uh, could, do with, uh, could do with these being added to our commentary position, couldn't we? <laughs> this is what it gets when you pay the, the top dollar for Club England. It's beautiful. I mean, the padded seats, we've got cup holders. I feel like I'm in the cinema, actually. Um, and Seb Bassong, are you going to have the popcorn out ready? Are we going to get a great final? We're going to have a great final, but without the popcorn, because I'm on a diet at the moment. So, <laughs> you know, I think I'll skip on the popcorn. But yeah, it's going to be an amazing day. So I want to talk to you about Newcastle United. Uh, Ian was there when they played the FA Cup final. Was it the 99 final you were at, the Manchester United one? No, I was, uh, I was when I uh, used to be the Radio Newcastle sports editor. So I was um, the charity shield here in 96 when Manchester United beat them 4-0 in the old Wembley. And then obviously in 98, uh, the FA Cup final uh, when Kenny Dalglish was the, uh, was the manager. Um, and I, I'd, left, I'd left the station then when they returned a, a year later. But the one abiding memory of that, Steve, is the homecoming parade the following day. So we travelled back from, from London, got back into the North East on the, on the Sunday. And we were on the, the, the open double-decker. Uh, and I was alongside Kenny Dalglish. And he was completely humbled by the experience. The amount of Newcastle fans that took to the streets just to welcome them home after losing the 98 FA Cup final, Kenny turned around and said, imagine what it'd be like if, if we'd have won it. And I know Alan Shearer has been quite vocal about how embarrassing it was that they had a parade for, for essentially, essentially losing a final. Uh, but it gives you an indication, if Newcastle today were to be successful, the place will go, London will probably see the biggest party ever. And when they go back home, I dread to think how many people will take to the streets of Newcastle. 
Seb, you of course have experienced Newcastle's amazing fans, although when you arrived at the club, they did not call you Sebastian Bassong, they called you, if I remember rightly, number 46. <laughs> yes, they did indeed. They called me number 46 because I came on a trial and I wasn't known. Nobody knew me. Then they were asking themselves, wondering who's that player in the central defence, number 46. And they were singing my number, yeah. So that's when my love for Newcastle started. Because they would sing a song even for a player on a, a trial game against Doncaster Rovers that they'd never seen before. Yeah, and I couldn't even... Honestly, I, I'm not going to lie, I couldn't understand a word of what, what they were saying. But after the, after the game, I've asked around and it, it struck me because I was like, they don't know me at all. I had a, quite a good game, but I was wearing the Newcastle shirt. So for them, I was almost one of them. And they, were, they created a song really quick that stood. And that's when I realized that the passion in the North East, in the Georgia land, is just something else. And I, I, have, I loved it ever since. Do you know, Ian, I, I spoke to Eddie Howe um, last week and we're going to hear it a bit close to kick off. But I asked him, you know, do you know what your emotions will be? And he said he, he didn't have a clue. The emotions that these players and the manager will experience if they were to win it, nobody can be ready for that, I don't think. No, because it's been so long since Newcastle United last won a trophy. They, they'll, they'll de I know for a fact they're definitely getting the flavour of, of how passionate the Newcastle fans are today and their excitement levels because I walked past the team hotel and they're staying very close to, to Wembley Stadium and the players were having a, a coffee about two hours ago and some of the players had clearly come onto the balcony and the Newcastle fans were singing songs, they were pointing, they were waving at them and then all of a sudden even more and more Newcastle fans were gathering. I can't recall, and I've done numerous finals here, where you normally walk on your way to the stadium, you'll see a mixture of support. I could hardly pick out a Manchester United fan. Now, admittedly, I'd, I got here about one o'clock. Everywhere was just black and white. You couldn't spot a Manchester United fan. The Newcastle fans, what's the allocation? 33,000? They're talking of 60,000 Newcastle fans being just here in the capital to sample the Wembley experience. The atmosphere outside is bedlam and it is just it's one of fervor that sebastian will know from playing at st james's park it's incredible we're going to hear very shortly from newcastle midfielder sean longstaff after we've heard about the end of the innings in that women's world t20 final adam mountford Australia made 156 for 60. That's a very good score, but not beyond reach. Beth Mooney, 74 not out, nine fours and a six, 53 balls. Shabnan Ishmael took two wickets in the last over after going for 10 from the first two balls of it. She was on a hat trick for a moment. Ash Garland made 29, a couple of wickets for Marazan Cap. So in front of this raucous crowd, Can South Africa made 157 to win the World Cup. We'll find out in the next hour or so. Huge day for all Newcastle players, but especially the local lads like Sean Longstaff. I spoke to him this week about whether or not he believed just 18 months since the new owners came in, they could be looking for silverware so quickly. I think where we were a year and a half ago and yeah, you probably know I think it's going to happen. And um, obviously me personally, I don't know if you're going to be here, I don't know if you're not going to be here. And yeah, the fact that I can sort of sit here now and, and know I'm going to play in a cup final for Newcastle is yeah, something I've always dreamt of and, and the fact that we're going to get a, to do it on Sunday is something I'm really looking forward to. Do you know, I remember the last time I spoke to you was in this same kind of aircraft hangar that we're in now <laughs> and we talked a lot about the injury that you've got <clears throat> a couple of months into your Newcastle career and sliding doors moments, you know, you could have been off on loan to Portsmouth. You worried at the time, I remember you saying that that, that could even be it for your career. So, God, to be here now. Yeah, very true. I still remember it. Obviously, we sat down there in the centre circle, weren't we? I remember. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just funny how football works out. And, and obviously, even after we'd done the interview, obviously, the, the seasons went. The season to follow wasn't perfect. And, um, and to be honest, I was, wasn't sure what was going to happen, a bit, to, to be brutally honest. And luckily, the manager came in and spoke to him and was obviously trying to sort a of contract out. And we struck up a really good relationship. And he obviously wanted to help me. and. And uh, obviously seeing I was an honest kid and wanted to work hard and I think he sort of liked that about us and, and yeah, like I said, he's came in and probably saved my Newcastle career in a way and, and I'll be forever grateful to him for doing that and um, yeah, just trying to repay him now with performances and um, but yeah, like I said, I'm just so thankful that he was the man to come in and, and sort of help us back on, back on track really. 
I'm not going to ask you to jinx it. I'm <laughs> just asking what if. What if you were to win the cup final? Can you can you even think now what it would mean to you? Uh, I can think what it would be like, but I don't really like saying it. Um, I think it would be unbelievable, though. I think obviously the last time we won a trophy was a long, long time ago. and. Yeah, Bob Monkey is still around the, the city and everyone still loves him because he's the last captain to, to lift the trophy. And um, yeah, I think if, if we can do that on Sunday, it would be unbelievable for the whole city and probably a reward for the, the hard work the group's put in the last year and a half to come out of a really, really uh, tough sort of time. And like, I think with the way the club's going, we're eventually going to, the club's eventually going to be playing in these games more seasons and we're going to win a lot of trophies and be competing for leagues and stuff. But to be the first team to do it hopefully will be really special and yeah you'll be remembered forever that's for sure that's Sean Longstaff Seb you could tell he he desperately didn't want to entertain the idea of Newcastle winning the trophy just yet <laughs> yeah and I, I totally understand because especially for a Newcastle kid you know homegrown player emotionally it takes a lot and it, he might be going too far by imagining you know playing the game beforehand so it would be a, an incredible achievement for him and for the whole club but one thing at a time so i totally agree with this whole process you know let's play the game first and let's enjoy if they win you know at the end of the game i can get a bit of manchester united insight from you as well because we were talking about this just uh, just in the little restaurant to our to our left hand side just now a lot of people saying that one of the things that gives Newcastle a good chance is that Manchester United had to play Barcelona in midweek but you're a bit skeptical as to how much that might affect the cup final aren't you yes I, I'm skeptical in in a way that it's a cup final if Manchester United would have played Barcelona on a week there like Thursday like they did and they would have played a Premier League a Premier League game I would have been thinking the same maybe they might be sluggish to start with but now the fact that it's a cup final changed the whole scenario because unconsciously they that's going to give them a, another type of boost because at the end of the game they know that they, there's something tangible to lift there's some silverware and emotionally you're not going to start the game play the game the same we're all human so we know that sometimes it's not the same when you go play a regular game and a final now it's a final it's a 90 minute game or plus at the end of this game there's a trophy and a lot of Manchester United players haven't won a trophy with Manchester United their new signing there's a new manager so listen to me the fact that they play in the midweek they got a depth of a squad they're professional they're top players I don't think it's going to change anything whatsoever and Ian, Newcastle could bring 30,000, 60,000, 100,000. It doesn't change the fact that Manchester United are favourites for this. No, it doesn't. And also their experience um, of, you know, playing in, 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 in finals. Um, Manchester United have, are on the looking out for, what, four trophies this year. Eric Ten Hag, they've got their team that's playing with momentum. They're on a, on a winning run, scoring at least two goals in, what, the last 10 games. Newcastle United have just lost a little bit of momentum. Uh, they've had injury issues. Obviously, Bruno Guimaraes back after a three-match ban will be a huge lift for them. I think they've, they've missed his presence in the midfield. But undoubtedly, Manchester United have, uh, are the favourites. Ian, Seb, thank you. Seb, à tout à l'heure. À tout à l'heure. See you later. Seb Bassong and our senior football reporter, Ian Dennis. A busy day in the Women's FA Cup fifth round as well. We've already had one result today. Manchester United beat Durham 5-0 to progress to the next round. In the two o'clock kickoffs, it's Brighton 1, Coventry 0. Uh, also, Bristol City 0, Manchester City 2, Charlton 0, Birmingham 0, Chelsea 1, Arsenal 0, uh, Lewis two Cardiff nil now and Spurs nil Reading nil Wembley obviously not the only place with a cup final today at Hamden it's Rangers against Celtic in the Scottish League Cup final that one kicks off at three available via BBC Sounds lots more to come on the cricket and the Six Nations as well but let's take you back to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium for second half commentary in the Premier League Paul Robinson with Ali Bruce Paul thank you Steve perfect timing Stuart Atwell at the centre of everything right at the end of the first half blows the whistle for the start of the second half we do still have 11 against 11 Tottenham nil, Chelsea nil, Tottenham in the white shirts, dark blue shorts and white socks attacking the goal away to our right, here's Kulishevsky on the ball inside the Chelsea box, Royale hits the shot and Kepa makes a good save right at the start of the second half, Fernandez gets to the rebound and clears, falls to Oliver Skip, oh what a goal, what an incredible strike from Oliver Skip on the half volley, Kepa gets a hand to it, up onto the bar and down into the back of the net, it's his first ever goal for Tottenham Hotspur, it's come again Chelsea in a quite remarkable atmosphere in the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. He will never forget that one. It's Tottenham 1-0.
and Chelsea nil. What a goal by Oliver Skip. He won't strike at any sweet. Emerson has a great opportunity. Kepa makes a decent save. I've never heard this stadium so loud. What a fantastic strike by Oliver Skip. Ball out to the right hand side. Emerson Royal. Kepa makes a save. Don't Chelsea don't clear it properly. Skip does really, really well. Gets in front of Felix. Ball comes down on the half volley. Couldn't strike it any sweeter. Kepa at full stretch gets a hand to it. Can't keep it out. 1 0 to Tottenham. Unbelievable start to the second half, and that goal on the replays looks better and better and better every single time. Match of the day two, BBC One, half past ten, for a young Tottenham player to score his first goal for his club in this game like that is quite something and Paul you will know as a former Tottenham player what that means Ali that's a sensational strike and a brilliant time goal for Tottenham from a Chelsea point of view Kepa's got to save that it's a brilliant strike on the half volley it's drifting away from him but it's just above his head he's got to do better than that the goalkeeper it really is poor goalkeeping he was at fault at the first at Emerson Royal instant he didn't hold the ball Koulibaly was unable to clear it properly that's why Skip ended up with the ball at the edge of the box and when Skip hits it it's a great strike on the half volley but it's close to the goalkeeper it's only just above his head to the left he tries to palm it over the bar and he gets it all wrong it's a great strike but Kepa's got to save it sets the second half up quite beautifully here on five live and BBC sounds troubled times again for Chelsea and their manager Graham Potter skip the goal scorer is down he's won Tottenham a free kick I'll give you the team lineups in just a second just to tidy up what happened at the end of the first half again as well where Hakim Ziyech saw a red card that was then overturned on VAR I think I may have been a little harsh on Stuart Atwell it was Ziyech's challenge initially on Richarlison that Richarlison reacted to as he made the challenge it looked like Atwell was going to book Ziyech for the challenge then it all kicked off Ziyech threw an arm at Emerson Royale in the dust up it caught his shoulder and went on into his face it eventually calmed down Stuart Atwell then gave a yellow card to Kai Havertz a yellow card to Emerson Royale for his part in it and then finally after all that came over and gave the red card to Hakim Ziyech now I initially thought that might have been on the advice of the VAR it seems it may well have been his decision he delayed it until last obviously he was then sent to the monitor because they'd seen it he then went over there and changed his mind we still think it should have been a red car as always sir you're absolutely spot on apart from one part where you said you may have been a bit harsh on Stuart Atwell <laughs> I thought he made a real mess of it <laughs> Paul Robinson with us here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium Tottenham leading Chelsea by a goal oh what a touch from Kane very nearly plays in Ben Davis and Chelsea all of a muddle eventually get it away through Fafana flipped header from Kuliszewski finds Emerson Royale Royale into the penalty area lays it off to Kuliszewski Kane's got a bit of space to turn little left footed dink is blocked by Koulibaly Tottenham very much on the front foot and in charge in this game at the moment Kane corner of the box Felix is there just as Kane was about to deliver ran in and took it off his toes Chelsea trying to play out he's Sterling on the ball Sterling up to Havertz gets it back and it's opening up for Chelsea Ziyech loads of space on the right hand side but the ball doesn't get through to him. It was a challenge from Romero on Sterling, very nearly turned into a Chelsea through ball, and then Royale can't find Kuliszewski on the right. And I tell you what, this could be some second half, Paul. It started exactly like the first half started, hasn't it? You attack and wheel attack. Fernandez up towards Havertz. Havertz spreads the play wide to Ziyech. Ziyech so dangerous, waspishly darting inside into the penalty area. Ben Davis, little nudge in the back, was it? Goes down. Yeah, inside his own box. Rhys James trying to get to the ball from behind has knocked him over free kick for Tottenham teams then Tottenham 1 Chelsea nil. Fraser Forster in goal for Tottenham Romero Dyer and Longley the three centre-backs Emerson Royale on the yellow card right wing back Ben Davis on the left skip the goal scorer and Hoybier Kuliszewski Kane and Richarlison Chelsea have Kepper in goal uh, Rhys James Wesley Fafana Kaladu Koulibaly and Ben Chilwell Thiago Silva went off injured in the first half Loftus-Cheek and Enzo Fernandez, Ziyech, Felix, Sterling and Havertz with Ziyech and Havertz, the two men on the yellow cards for Chelsea. Kane on the turn, great vision as always, finds Hoybierg to his left. Hoybierg looks up and quickly switches play to the right, drives the ball across field. Royale cushions it on the instep and passes across here to Hoybierg. Lovely first touch to control it. 
Longley with his cross in over Richarlison, nearly found Kane, might fall to Kuliszewski and eventually cleared by Chilwell. Tottenham on top here at the moment, Paul. They started really, really well, started with some real intent. Harry Kane's just gone down in the box after a challenge of Kula, with Koulibaly. But when Tottenham are in possession there, the difference with Richarlison, he joins Harry Kane in that forward line. You don't find whether it's Son or Kuliszewski sitting deeper. When Richarlison's on the pitch, he plays really high with Harry Kane. And as well as Chelsea did in the first half, it's, it's what they've, they've suffered from. They have all this fantastic possession. They look great on the eye. They're very pleasing to watch, but they've got no real end product. Harry Kane's holding his right shoulder. He and Richarlison almost kind of went for the same ball as the cross came in. How did Kane take the knock? Koulibaly ran into Koulibaly going for the header, but it looks like he's going to be OK. If Tottenham win the game, uh, they'll be on 45 points, having played a game more than Manchester United. It'll be four points ahead of them. They'll have played two games more than Newcastle, but they'll be four points ahead of them. And for Chelsea, it will be no win in six. And at the moment, still, with just the one goal scored in those last five and a half games, it is over a decade since Chelsea went six consecutive competitive games without a win back in 2012. Felix. Uh, to Chilwell. Chilwell, what a wonderful ball that is. Onto the left foot of Ziyech with the curling effort. That's off target and goes behind for a goal kick. Six and a half minutes gone in the second half. Tottenham lead Chelsea by a goal to nil. I think we're in for a really, really good second half here. Chelsea now have to come out, show some intent. They did in the first half, they played well, had good possession in the final third, but now they have to find that route to goal that they have struggled with all season. And that really has been their Achilles heel is scoring goals. And they have to get, you know, they have to write that today now. Match of the day two, BBC One, half past ten. You sometimes wonder when there's only one Premier League game on how they're going to fill that show sometimes. I don't think they're going to struggle tonight, Paul. They could fill it with the last five minutes of the first <laughs> half and the goal only, couldn't they? Tottenham coming again. Here's the goal scorer, Skip, the 22-year-old. Low pass to his right, finds Royale. Chilwell's backtracking, step over from Royale. Dancing feet inside the penalty area. The ball hit Koulibaly's hand. It was right by his side, and the referee saw that straight away. Here's Hoybierg. Penalty appeals came more from the Tottenham fans than they did from the players. But can Tottenham find a second while they're on top? Romero took too long to play that pass, and Havertz has half blocked it. And then Havertz barges into the back of Dyer. He's got to be careful because Havertz is on the yellow card. Kuliszewski has it wide on the right, plays it back to Skip. Hoybierg in loads of space here in central midfield, 40 yards out. To his left is Longley. Longley's closed down by Ziesch. Back to Hoybierg. Driven pass out to the right. Awkward one for Royale to control, but he does so. Curls the ball in towards Richarlison. He leaps. Good jump at the back from Rhys James. He's taken a knock on the back of the head, and Richarlison has hurt his head as well. So we'll stop play for a second and take a breath. Tottenham 1, Chelsea 0. In games like this, you are always looking for those sort of comic book heroes, which reminds me to tell you uh, about... Friday's Fact of the Day, a regular feature uh, during the Premier League seasons. John Murray and Dennis and I take part in Tony Livesey's Fact of the Day. It was Claire McDonald's Fact of the Day actually last Friday, and it was all about a comic book called Hotspur uh, back in the day. Paul Robinson, never heard of Hotspur? I bet you were a Roy the Rovers man, weren't you? I can remember Roy the yeah. Rovers, yeah, but not Hotspur. No, Hotspur's uh, a little bit probably before your time, before my time. Um, full of superheroes, I was asked which one of these wasn't a genuine superhero uh, in that comic. The Iron Teacher, Union Jack Jackson, or the Green Finned Demon? And the answer was the Green Finned Demon, and I got that all wrong. Kepper getting booed and jeered again by the Tottenham fans here. We're going to restart, I think with a drop ball here inside the Chelsea penalty area. Charlotte has had to go off and come back on. We've played nine minutes in the second half. Tottenham lead Chelsea 1-0. Now Kane is standing a couple of yards from the drop ball. <laughs> it's dropped and Kepper picks it up. It's a fantastic atmosphere, isn't oh. it? Kepper's the pantomime villain today, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Koulibaly plays back to him. Wait for it. Yeah, there we go. And Kepper chips the ball out to his right. James chests it down. Should be a really good 35-40 minutes of football here. The perfect uh, aperitif for Manchester United against Newcastle United at Wembley. Commentary on the way here on Five Live from half past four. Little kick out between Romero and Sterling. We're going to have to keep our eye on every single challenge from now on. Well, Romero, Romero just kicks everybody. I wouldn't take it personally, Raheem Sterling. He seems to run around the pitch kicking anybody every week. <laughs> Here's Loftus-Cheek. Tottenham 1, Chelsea 0. Tottenham's last win against Chelsea at Wembley when that was their home ground in the Premier League back in November 2018. Pochettino, the Tottenham boss. Maurizio Sarri, the Chelsea boss. Koulibaly's clearance. 
hits Royale, goes out for a throw-in to Chelsea. Oh my goodness me, Koulibaly's thrown it straight out of play. I don't think it ever went in play. No, so they'll get another go, won't they? Women's FA Cup fifth round, Chelsea against Arsenal, half-time, Flo Pollock. It's Chelsea 1, Arsenal 0. It's been an open, entertaining game. The story so far, Chelsea have been clinical. Arsenal haven't, despite having so many chances. And that's why at the break, Chelsea lead Arsenal by a goal to nil. Uh, other scorelines in the Women's FA Cup fifth round. Brighton leading Coventry 1-0. Manchester City 3-0 up away to Brighton. Charlton 0, Birmingham 0. Lewis 2, Cardiff 1. Tottenham Reading 0-0 at half-time. Nice ball forward from Fernandes to Felix. Looking for Sterling. Couldn't quite control it. Might get another go here. Just outside the Tottenham penalty area and plays it out wide to Chilwell. Chilwell with the crossfield pass all the way over to Rhys James. Casually controls it with his right foot on the volley. Wide to Ziyech. Be interesting to see what Graham Potter's possibly thinking about substitutions and changing the game. Chelsea have not been able to get into their rhythm in the second half, conceding, I think it was 22 seconds uh, after the restart. Chilwell, wide to Sterling. Back to Fernandez. Fernandez to Chilwell, who's popped up in the inside forward position. Back to Koulibaly. Wide to Sterling on the left up against Royale, onto his right foot, slides the pass to Chilwa, looking for the run of Sterling, down by the byline, not sure he kept that in, cross comes in, flag is up, yeah, goal kick, goal kick for Tottenham. It's going to be very interesting to see how this second half pans out, like you quite rightly say, Graham Potter's probably got to make the first move, because in possession, Tottenham are quite happy to let Chelsea have the ball in front of them and hit them on the counter-attack. From a Chelsea point of view, you know that they've got the quality, we've seen that in Sterling, Felix, ZX, the, the quality that they've got in the final third. But Tottenham on the counter-attack have got the pace of Richarlison and Kulazewski, and that's something that they've used even when they haven't got a goal behind. Looks like Denis Zakaria is about to come on for Chelsea in their midfield. They've won the ball back inside the Tottenham half. That is a fabulous dive header interception from Oliver Skip to prevent Fernandez's pass getting through to Sterling. The ball with Rhys James forward to Felix, right in the middle of the Tottenham half. Familiar Tottenham song ringing around the stadium. Tottenham fans won't be counting their chickens just yet. They know the history against Chelsea, particularly the recent history in these games. But they are leading 1-0. In fact, that is the first goal they've scored at this stadium, Tottenham, against Chelsea in the Premier League. 6-1 on aggregate now since the stadium opened. That's right. Good from Tottenham. Royale on the move forward. Can they find a second? Kane makes the run, just drifts into an offside position. Royale holds on. I can see Nick Godwin to my left furiously typing away with some guidance from the VAR hub. Paul Robinson's going to be looking forward to this, I'm sure. Have we got time to read it? I'm not sure, actually, Paul, so let's wait for a break in play. <laughs> uh, that's on the overturned red card for Hakim Ziyech at the end of the first half. Poor pass from Richarlison. I wonder when we're going to see Son Heung Min as well, actually. Good run forward from Loftus Cheek, caught by Ben Davis. Free kick for Chelsea. Right, here we go. The assistant referee advised that there was an arm raised from a player. VAR clarified the identity of Hakim Ziyech. In consultation with the assistant, Stuart Atwell gave a red card. So that's the assistant here on the field. VAR then recommended a review, after which the red card was downgraded as it did not meet the threshold for violent conduct. Full stop so much time wasted surely in all the time that it took Stuart Atwell to book the other players and then reach his decision he's talked to the VAR and gone I'm thinking of giving a red card what do you think the VAR could then say to him no it's not a red card you don't have to go and look at the screen it was still a mess Ben Davis yellow card by the way uh, just while we were discussing that still Tottenham leading Chelsea by a goal to nil the other point to make on it as well is I think Ziyech could have been booked for the initial challenge on Richarlison that started the whole thing and then could equally have been booked I mean I don't actually know what he got his yellow card for whether it was the challenge or the shove towards Real because I think both could easily have been yellow a double booking so the initial challenge what caused yeah. the whole problem was Ziyech's challenge yeah. and Richarlison yep. so he could have got booking for the challenge yep. and then booking for hitting out so which is probably what we thought happened very lucky not to be given a red card Felix bringing it forward it's going to shoot well blocked by Dyer on the edge of the penalty area Felix is able to collect the rebound Richarlison back doing some defending Mason Mount and Dennis Zakaria getting ready to come on for Chelsea so it's going to be a double change in midfield Sterling wide on the left I wonder who's going to be taken off actually Fernandez's diagonal ball in too close to Forster and Felix bumps into Forster but Forster is the bigger man so he didn't feel it I was thinking I was wondering who would be coming off I think Ziyech will be one simply because of the tightrope that he's walking I think the, the incident there the booking is picked up and he really has had very little impact in this second half 
I think Loftus Cheek, we're being told, is going to be the other. Royale chests the ball down inside his own half. Play to skip. Royale down on the floor, tangled with Ben Chilwell. Play continues. Kane lofts it forward. Kepper's miles out of his area, but read it well, waited for it to bounce, headed it to his left. Here's Chilwell. Chilwell running away from Kuliszewski. Kuliszewski, bit clumsy in the challenge, knocks Chilwell over, uh, and that is going to be a free kick to Chelsea. One other really nice moment I'd like to mention at half time Tottenham's tribute here to the late John Motson. Uh, the great BBC commentator, of course, who sadly passed away on Thursday. Uh, up on the big screens, we not only had a picture of Motti, but they ran the Ricky Villa famous goal in the FA Cup final replay against Manchester City uh, with Motti's unforgettable commentary across the top of that. And then after that, a lovely long round of applause for the late, great uh, John Motson. 16 minutes gone in the second half. Yeah, Loftus-Cheek and Ziyech off. Zakaria and mount on for Chelsea and still half an hour left of this enthralling game of Premier League football League Cup final on the way five live and BBC sounds and we're coming up to three o'clock as well which means kickoff in the Scottish League Cup final uh, is not far away and France against Scotland in the Six Nations commentaries are both available via BBC Scotland and BBC Scotland Extra on the BBC sounds app so whatever you want to listen to this afternoon you can get it Tottenham 1, Chelsea 0. Here's Fernandez. Ball out wide towards Sterling. Ben Davis, good defending, good backpedalling. Not often you see him playing the left wing back role actually for Tottenham, is it, Paul? He's more normally kind of the left sided centre back, but um, last week and, and this week uh, he's done well. I'll, I'll come back to that in a second because Chelsea have taken the throw, and here's Fernandez lining up a little clip ball into the box. No, he's got that wrong. Looking for the run of Sterling, but he was never going to get there. It's behind for a goal kick. Yeah, he's changed shape as well as Graham Potter since the substitution. He had Fernandes and Lofton Cheek as the two holding midfielders, but Zachary is slotted in higher up. And Mason Mount is playing in the 10 role behind Havertz, which has allowed Sterling and Felix to get wider. So he's really trying to stretch the pitch. You find Mason Mount has gone really high in behind Havertz, and he's playing with just one deep line midfielder in Fernandes. So Graham Potter changing things up. Tough times for the Chelsea manager. And as we were discussing before the game, when he spoke during the week, I think he'd be very hard not to find anyone who loves their football and is of a right mind, who didn't have sympathy for what he and his family have been going through recently. He knows, obviously, it's a high-profile job and it demands results, but uh, plenty of stuff has, has, has crossed the line that has come his way. But as an English coach, regardless of your allegiances to whatever club, you want to see him doing well. Yeah. I mean, him and Eddie Howe in the Premier League at the moment, you look at the foreign coaches that come into our game and we look at the next England manager, the likes of Graham Potter and Eddie Howe are kind of carrying the torch for English coaches. And regardless of, of what your team is, you, you want to see your fellow countrymen do well and succeed. Yeah, well said, Paul Robinson. Absolutely right. And he's a good football manager. We know that as well because we've seen what he's done elsewhere. And we saw in the first half, actually, what is possible with this Chelsea team if he's given the time to do it. They're losing today against Tottenham and there's a ball forward for Ben Davis to chase. Rhys James gets there just in time for Chelsea. Richarlison nods it down to Harry Kane. Kane on the turn just inside the Chelsea half. Finds Royale in central midfield. Pep Guardiola is going to be having a look at him soon, popping up there and doing those sort of things. Royale back to skip. Skip to Hoybierg, little one-two. Tottenham trying to control the game. Here's Royale. Oh, it's a neat pass through to Skip. Skip away from Zakaria. Beats Fernandez as well. Hoybierg spots Ben Davis. Can he keep that in on the left? He's going to have to work really hard to get there. Does so. Whips in a first-time cross. Great ball. And Koulibaly clears it away. Long leg jumps. Miss controls. Sterling takes it off him. Good pass from him across to Fernandez. Chelsea now, four attackers against four Tottenham defenders. Felix on the left-hand side, outside of his right foot. The ball will find Sterling on the edge of the box. Slides the pass for Mount. Romero's across to deal with it for Tottenham. Takes it and runs it out to the left. Knocks it into the shins of Mount and it goes behind for a goal kick. Well, again, it's end-to-end, -end, isn't it? Hoiberg just overhits a pass there to Ben Davis, who does really well to keep it in play, but the Chelsea defence intercepts it. And within two passes, they're into the final third of Spurs' defence. Fraser Forster waiting to take uh, the goal kick. So, as I said, Rangers Celtic about to get underway at Hampden Park in the Scottish League Cup final. It'll be watched by Roddy Forsyth. Rangers were concerned about the fitness of Tillman, Jack, Lundstrom and Arfield, but they're all in the picture today. Tillman and Lundstrom start. Jack and Arfield on the bench, along with Raskin and Cantwell, the two January signings who, by general consent, improved the side. So, Michael Beale's opted for a conservative lineup against Celtic in the familiar 4-3-3. Thank you, Roddy. Roddy will give us updates throughout the afternoon.
First domestic silverware to be decided in Scotland as Kulashevsky plays it to Kane. Ben Davis in the middle if he can stretch. No, he can't. The cross was just over here. Kepper's kept the ball in by the byline. And Rhys James will clear down the right for Chelsea and find Sterling. All that again from Emerson Royale. He does really, really well to rob Ben Chilwell of possession. Puts Harry Kane in and Ben Davis finds himself unmarked in the middle and Kane just overhits it. It's unlike Harry Kane, isn't it? Paul, I expected him to put that right on the spot for Ben Davis. Uh, here's Havertz. Back to Chilwell. Chilwell to Fernandez inside the Tottenham half. Come on, you Spurs. You can hear loud and proud inside this stadium. Blue sky above, a little sunshine threatening to poke through uh, as well. Fernandez whips the pass out speedily to the right. Sterling on the run. Richarlison in with a really good tackle in the left back position. Sterling comes back at him. Richarlison plays a ball infield to Hoybierg under pressure. Wide it goes to the left. Tottenham think they're going to get the throw. Chelsea think they're going to get the throw. Chelsea do get the throw. Uh, Women's World T20 final in the cricket. Australia, South Africa, Adam Mountford. South Africa 17 without loss in the fifth over. They've not lost a wicket, but they keep hitting the fielders and the required rate is already up towards 10 and over. South Africa even another 140 to win off 91 balls. Commentary continues on Radio 5 Sports Extra. 21 minutes gone in the second half. Tottenham 1, Chelsea 0. League Cup final on the way. Felix to Fernandez. Lovely interplay between those two. Back to Felix, edge of the box, little flick. Havertz might be in, Forster off his line quickly. Does brilliantly for Tottenham. Paul Robinson, tell me how good that was. Ah, fantastic anticipation, and he runs the risk of giving away a penalty. It's one of those balls that pokes straight through the back four. He reads it so well, he's got a great starting position, halfway up towards his six-yard line, and it's poked through to Ziyech, who looks like he's going to get there first. But Forster, for all his years, gets out so quickly and gets down at the feet. Extremely brave as Ziyech, takes one to the face as well, but fantastic goalkeeping by Fraser Forster definitely onside as well having had a look at the first replay that a good chance for Chelsea but Forster yes saving at the feet of Havertz Chilwell gets a nudge in the back Kulishevsky concedes the free kick Chilwell takes it quickly here's Fernandez. Fernandez playing the ball across to Rhys James one goal in their last five games going into this one Chelsea and in terms of Premier League form eight goals in the last 14 Premier League games which is barely believable considering the attacking talent that they have on the pitch. Can they find a way through here? Fernandez, I think that'll be intercepted by Ben Davis on the half volley. Christian Stellini, so far, happy to keep this Tottenham lineup as it is. Midway through the second half, no changes as yet uh, for them. Zakaria inside his own half to Rhys James. Rhys James plays it back to Kepper. Tottenham fans encouraging their forwards to press Chelsea here and put them under pressure. Koulibaly wide to Chilwell on the left and Chilwell's got it wrong. He's knocked it straight out of play. Throw in for Tottenham. No, really good pressure from Tottenham there, putting the Chelsea back four under, under pressure high up the field. Emerson Royale finds himself really high at the pitch playing in this wing-back role. And he's been effective in keeping Ben Chilwell back because that's an offensive weapon that Chelsea use quite often is Chilwell overlapping on the left. And he hasn't got into those positions today because of the advanced positions that Emerson Royale's been able to take up. Emerson Royale about to take the throw, level with the edge of the Chelsea penalty area on the right. Chilwell chests it down, Richarlison slides in to try and make the challenge. Chilwell barges him, Richarlison barges him back, Chilwell throws him away assistant referee I'm not sure he saw all of that Zakaria tackled by Hoybeck challenge is starting to fly in it's getting tasty again yeah Felix has got a bit of quality though hasn't he he's the only one in the Chelsea side when he gets on the ball he really does look like he can make a difference since Graham Potter's made those substitutions they've changed wings Sterling's gone out onto the right and he's been a lot less effective than he has in the first half he's very good on that left hand side in the first half Zakaria to Rhys James just inside the Tottenham half. Tottenham 1, Chelsea 0. Just over 20 minutes to play. Felix forward to Mount. Wide to Chilwell. Chilwell back to Fernandez. About 35 yards from the Tottenham goal. Great vision. Lovely execution of pass. Sweeps it across the pitch to Rhys James. Lays it back here to Sterling. Edge of the box is Fernandez. Little scoop ball in the air. Sterling will jump. Good header, but only into the arms of Fraser Forster. Again, comfortable for the Spurs keeper. And if Spurs can limit Chelsea to those type of chances between now and the end of the game, they will be, they'll be pleased. But I think Chelsea are going to come more and more into this game. They've got to. They've got to try and create more opportunities. Tottenham sensing a potential second. Emerson Royale bringing it forward. Just ran out of puff and really an idea of what to do with the ball. Skip goes flying into Felix, then goes flying over Felix. The referee allows play to continue. Havertz can't control it. Royale plays it to Hoybierg. 
then gives it to Kane. Tottenham slow it down. Romero to Hoybier. Kane again. Kane looking up, sees the diagonals on. Ben Davis starts to make the run. He's going to allow the ball to bounce. Heads it down in front of himself. Richarlison making ground in the middle. Davis's cross comes in. Fafana's able to intercept at the near post. Richarlison still looking for that first Premier League goal for Tottenham. Could have had a little bit more time there, Ben Davis. Harry Kane once again deep in his own half. Sprays the ball brilliantly out to the left-hand side. And Ben Davis is in acres of space on that side. You just expect him to run it in and run into the box. Yet he chooses to open it up outside of his feet and try and find Richarlison with a cross. Stuart Atwell's coming over to have a word with his fourth official here. We might have problems with the technology again because he's heading down the tunnel. Christopher Cavanaugh. <laughs> he's just gone. He's disappeared. Fourth official this afternoon. We don't have a referee. <laughs> Maybe he's had enough. Or he's, he wants to get away. He knows how bad it is to get away from the stadium. Anyone going to stick their hand up? Tottenham fans, Chelsea fans, if you are listening to us this afternoon, 08085 909 693 is the number to dial to have your say on 606 tonight, but so much more football coming your way before that. Manchester United against Newcastle United. Team news will be in about 25 minutes' time. Ahead of the League Cup final in the Six Nations, France, Scotland kicked off uh, at 3 o'clock. Let's get an update on that one from Gareth Lewis. Yes, still nil-nil, all France so far in the early stages, like they put things right after that defeat by Ireland. Scotland two from two, and tentatively eyeing a championship as France score. Great start, Roman Intermac with the opening try for the French. Thank you, Gareth. Commentary available uh, via the BBC Sounds app. Radio Scotland Extra is the station to look for there. We've got... Um, a relatively lengthy break in play here because both sets of players have been able to come over, have a chat to the managers, have a drink uh, while the referee sorts himself out. Let's get the latest on that Women's World T20 final in the cricket. Australia, South Africa, Adam Mountford. So for 26 for one in the seventh over. They have lost a wicket player of the match in that semi-final victory against England. Tasman Brits is out, caught by McGrath of the bowling of the exciting teenager Darcy Brown. Out for 10. Couldn't get going today, Brits. 17 balls for that 10 runs. The score needs to keep going and keep going quickly. And they've got Laura Wolfhart starting to play some nice shots. She's moved her score on to 11. And Marisol caps it a boundary as well. She's on four. A South Africa need another 131 to win from 82 balls. Referee's got his shirt back on Stuart Atwell gets some ironic cheers as he comes back onto the field just before we get back underway women's FA Cup fifth round second half Chelsea Arsenal Flo Pollock still Chelsea won Arsenal nil in that first half both sides had loads of chances Arsenal had so many chances but they, they just can't find the back of the net it's a bit of a problem at the moment so as it stands it's still Chelsea won Arsenal nil still Tottenham won Chelsea nil in the Premier League here We've played 28 minutes now in the second half, but that's obviously going to add a little bit of added time at the end of the game. And the stats seem to suggest, Paul Robinson, that Tottenham have... Is that second half or overall in the game? No, possession? that's overall in the game. It's 70%. just 70%, yeah. Wow. Well, I think Chelsea have been better than that. I'd be really interested to hear what Chelsea fans have got to say on 606 after yeah. the show. They'll phone and see what's going on, whether you're actually happy with the performance or we're in a results business. We know results haven't been great. And the inconsistency of the performances yeah. as well. But I think the first half here, you watch that team and you certainly wouldn't look at that team having not known that the manager was under pressure, thinking the manager was under pressure, would you? Havertz is down hurt. Chelsea absolutely livid. They've not been given a free kick. Mason Mount gets booked for the complaint. Christian Romero got himself in a spot of bother, thought he was going to lose the ball to Havertz, then made a heavy challenge on Havertz, and it's Mason Mount who ends up in the book. Yeah, he just took his eye off the ball, went in heavily and got the ball. Havertz came in to try and win it and went flying over Romero. Romero's been a little bit casual a couple of times during this game. Yeah, he's done it a couple of times. And for those of you that are used to watching Christian Romero, that's the one where he goes with two legs, his yeah. two-footed challenge. And he, he's, there, was, there was nothing illegal about it. He just gets a bad touch and he times it wrong. And the referees book Mason Mount. And I'm, I'm, I'm liking seeing that because the referees are doing it more and more. Players that are running at the referee and yeah. surrounding the referee with decisions. If we start showing them yellow cards and the decisions like that, they'll soon stop doing it. And I'm enjoying watching that at the moment. Yeah, no, I agree, Paul. And I think... Um you know, you'd hope that, that that message would translate into grassroots football, kids football, all football uh, as well. Here's Harry Kane. First time ball's a good one. Ben Davis controls it well. Edge of the box. Ball in towards the far post. Royale's going to jump for it. Beaten in the air, but it will fall to Kuliszewski. Kuliszewski's got two blue-shirted Chelsea players for company. Enzo Fernandez is one of them. Kuliszewski's beaten him. Trying to beat Felix as well. Fernandez gets back at him, makes the tackle. Felix overruns it on the edge of his own box. Hoybier got it to Royale. Here's Richarlison. Shoots over the bar. 
he's desperate to score Richarlison you can see he gets an opportunity there gets half a chance of a shot and goal 20 yards out and Ben Davies is in a better position with him laterally to the edge of the box only one thing on Richarlison's mind when he gets a sight of goal he wants that goal 15 minutes plus added time remaining two balls on the field can they get the ball off so that the game doesn't have to stop yes they can Tottenham 1 Chelsea nil. Chelsea building play down the left Chilwell thought he was fouled by Harry Kane stays sitting down on the floor with his arms spread out wide to say to Stuart Atwell come on are we going to get a decision at some point this afternoon that's obviously from the Chelsea point of view here's Sterling Sterling plays back to the halfway line to Fofana. Next break in play will take you to Hamden Park as Mason Mount finds Sterling edge of the box. Ball breaks through. Might fall for Havertz. Foster forced to beg your pardon off his line. And the ball rolls gently towards him. And he grabs it. So early stages in the Scottish League Cup final. Rangers Celtic ready for sight. Yeah, we've started three minutes after the scheduled kickoff time. Celtic had an extended huddle that kept Rangers waiting. Then they wouldn't give Rangers the ball for the first two minutes. But matters have evened up since then. They're still scoreless here at Hamden after five minutes. Tottenham at the moment heading for a first win in nine games in all competitions against Chelsea. Paul Robinson's just spotted that Son Hyung Min has been given the nod for Tottenham, which is not what Graham Potter will want to see. Lots of stuff going on off the ball again. Kuliszewski trying to stop Chilwell, take a quick throw. The two number 21s pushing and shoving and wrestling. Referees ignoring that quite sensibly. Chelsea have taken the throw and Zachary has played it across to Reese James. Two wins in the last 14 in all competitions against Bournemouth and Crystal Palace. That is all that Chelsea have to show for recent efforts in terms of wins uh, in those 14 games. Looks like they're heading for another defeat this afternoon, but still only a goal in it. Here's Royale down the line to Kuliszewski. Now there's too much on that pass to get it back to Royale and Chelsea have it with Havertz and he's arrowing in from the left-hand side. Runs across Hoybierg and sees Reese James there for support. Havertz drops deep, gets the ball back from James, plays back to Zakaria. Zakaria towards Havertz, support on the right from James again. Pass was a little slow to get to him. Good ball to Sterling, Havertz first though. Cross, blocked behind. That'll be a corner. Tottenham thought there was an offside in there. Yeah, he looked offside there, did Havertz. But the 1-2 was Sterling. Once again, Sterling involved in everything that Chelsea do well. Quick movement, interchange on the edge of the box. Havertz finds himself in, in behind the Tottenham defence where he did look offside. They've got a set play corner is going to be taken uh, in the corner of the stadium where the Chelsea fans are situated so you suddenly see a, a load of hands clapping furiously as Ben Chilwell comes running towards that corner flag to take this corner for Chelsea last 15 minutes of the game Son is stripped off and ready to go for Tottenham Tottenham have the corner to defend Chilwell's in swing a good powerful header from Dyer. chested down by Reese James going to hit one he drags it Fernandez gets a foot on the ball up in the air it goes to Fraser Forster France Scotland in the Six Nations Gareth Lewis Dreadful start for Scotland. They conceded that early Roman Intermac try and they've just had second row Grant Gilchrist sent off for a reckless tackle. So Scotland down to 14. They've only played six minutes. Yeah, that sounds like a red card that won't get overturned, unlike the Hakim Ziyech one here uh, at Tottenham. 8 o'clock tonight after 6.06. A look back at the third round of games uh, in the Six Nations. Rugby Union Daily Podcast. Always a great listen. Make sure you subscribe to that on the BBC Sounds app. Tottenham are making the change first of the game for them. And it's Kuliszewski who's coming off for Son. And actually, that in itself, Paul, I think is interesting that Kuliszewski comes off and not Richarlison this time. Yeah, he's got the option to do that now, hasn't he, with, with the, uh, the attacking players that they've got. Listen to that ovation for Son. I mean, he's, he's loved in, these, in this part of the world. He's been excellent, but his goal scoring and his performances haven't been good enough this year. But that's a real nod in the direction of Richarlison, and that will give him a confidence boost because he has lacked game time. You can see the... Uh the particular Son fans with the South Korean flags uh, in the stand opposite us uh, who suddenly get the flags out wave and cheer because their man is on the field so he sets up on the left with Charleston on the right came through the middle and Tottenham leading through the Oliver Skip goal which came 22 seconds into the second half Fernandez for Chelsea wide to Felix Felix to Mount, Mount, challenge from Romero as a strong one on the edge of the box, but a fair one. Skip, early ball up towards Kane, surrounded by blue shirts, fouled by Zakaria. Oh, richarlison has gone down off the ball, it's kicking off again. Ben Chilwell was about to get involved, the referee spotted that, other players came rushing in to break it up, and it's it's at boiling point again. Well, there was three instances there, we need one of us to watch each one that's going on at the moment. There's Richarlison down on this near side, Harry Kane down in the middle. 
referee just needs to take control and calm this game down a little bit. Okay, we'll let the referee do that. I think there's been another try over in Paris, Gareth Lewis. Yeah, and even worse for Scotland, a second try for France. Ethan Dumotier in the left-hand corner. Difficult conversion to come, but France lead by 12 points to nil. Right, that sounds like that could be a, a long afternoon for Scotland. A man down as well after the red card. Free kick for Tottenham here. Team news from Wembley coming in just over 15 minutes time. Manchester United against Newcastle United in full here on Five Live and BBC Sounds. Scottish League Cup final is underway. Rangers nil, Celtic nil. Commentary of that available via BBC Scotland on the Sounds app. Here's Ben Davis. Ben Davis just inside the Chelsea half. Turns and plays it to Hoybierg. Back to Davis on the left. Hoybierg again in field. Wriggles out of a tight space. Gets the ball back to Dyer. Skip's got a stretch to keep it for Tottenham. Does well. Richarlison to Royale. Richarlison immediately sets off for the return pass. Gets to that ball first. Wide on the right. Koulibaly's out there. Richarlison wants to win a corner. Knocks it into Koulibaly's shins and does win the corner. He does well there, Koulibaly, because Richarlison seems to have the better of him. Koulibaly just uses all his experience there. Stands up and forces it out for the corner. By the way, look out. Look who's coming on here. Here's another story for you. Former Arsenal man Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, recently frozen out of the Chelsea first team, it seemed, is about to come on and try and find Graham Potter. An absolutely crucial goal, considering Chelsea's recent run of form. Corner for Tottenham. Son takes it, whips it into the near post, tucked in at the back post by you-know-who, Harry Kane. That should do the job for Tottenham today. The stadium explodes with noise and joy. Tottenham 2, Chelsea 0. Well, it's a well-worked corner by Tottenham on this near side. Ball played into the near post, flick on, and it's that space that you so often find at the far post. Harry Kane just drifts into it, finds himself completely unmarked, and it's one of the simplest goals that the England striker will score. 2-0 to Tottenham, and it's such an easy corner kick. Son with the outswing, a near post flick on. It's Eric Dyer who looks like he's leaning on Koulibaly, I think it is. He looks like he's leaning on. Oh, it's Mason Mount at the near post. Why Mason Mount's picking up Eric Dyer, I don't know. Eric Dyer leans over the top. Kane goes in round the back. Tap in, one of the easiest goals that he'll score. But it's just the instinct that Harry Kane's got to pick up those positions in the box. Tell you what, though, Paul, for the finish, you're right. I mean, he, he's there and the goal is open, but the ball is behind him, isn't it? And it's he doesn't rush, he doesn't panic, just sticks his foot on it, sticks it away. We'll obviously love scoring against Chelsea. We've got to do the numbers as well with Harry Kane. Every goal that goes in, 268 now for Tottenham, 201 Premier League goals, 59 behind Alan Shearer. Chelsea Arsenal, fifth round of the Women's FA Cup. There's been a goal, Flo Pollock. Chelsea's women are having a better day. They've doubled their lead against Arsenal. Sam Kerr, the goal scorer, played through on goal. She coolly chipped it over the on-rushing goalkeeper, never in doubt. Chelsea 2, Arsenal 0. So Mikhailo Mudrik uh, comes on, Joao Felix is off, and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang is on for Chelsea as well. But goodness me, they've got a mountain to climb now and very little time to do it in. Tottenham 2, Chelsea 0. It's going to be a massive win for Tottenham, historically, in terms of the race for the top four. And poor old Graham Potter, things going from bad to worse for his Chelsea team. Next up for them at home against Leeds next week, which is going to be five lives, three o'clock commentary on Saturday afternoon. And then Champions League action at home against Borussia Dortmund, trying to turn that one round. Here's Zakaria for Chelsea, who did play some good stuff in the first half, but now find themselves... 2-0 down and this stadium is absolutely bouncing the atmosphere is fantastic i mean we talk about graham potter and we say how well that they played in the first half where does that leave them this result has huge implications for both teams today yeah. if it's to stay as it is mudrick's ball in good header away by ben davis it was just over the head of a yang richarlison stretches can't keep it in play throwing for chelsea wide on the left they've got to find two goals in six minutes plus added time i think we're gonna have at least five minutes of added time enzo fernandez's ball in caught on the bounce by fraser forster paul robinson you can see the, the progression that chelsea are making at times but it's not consistent they, they haven't got enough going forward you can understand the frustration of the chelsea fans because it's not just one or two games this has been going on for too long results we're in a results business and results haven't been there and once that second goal has gone in now they don't look like they're there if they go out of the champ Champions League this week to Dortmund. Yeah. They're, they're sitting 10th in the Premier League. They're out of the FA Cup. They're yeah. out of the League Cup. They're out of the Champions League. Where does that leave Chelsea's season? I agree with you, Paul. I think both you and I uh, agree as well that Graham Potter was 
when he was employed, the words were long-term project. He's going to need time to do it. Will he be given that time to do it? That is the big question, and that'll be a big talking point on 6.06 tonight as well. You can barely hear yourself think inside this stadium at the moment, and that tells you exactly what this game means to both sets of fans. And it's the Tottenham fans crowing at the moment, leading by two goals to nil, defending inside their own half. Zakaria, low pass out to the right to Rhys James. Rhys James plays it in field. Zakaria again looking for Aubameyang on the edge of the box. Tottenham are going to be so dangerous on the break here. Mudrik's going to hit one from range. Good hit, but wide of the target. And behind it goes for the goal kick. Latest on the World T20 final, Adam Mountford. Halfway stage for South Africa, 52 for two. They've lost the crucial wicket of Marizan Camp. Caught mistiming a drive of Ash Gardner, caught it short third. South Africa needs another 105 to win, and they've got 10 overs to get them. Commentary continues on Radio 5 Sports Extra. More drama in the Six Nations in Paris. Gareth Lewis. Oh, it's all happening here. France now down to 14 men. Mohamed Hawass, their prop, sent off for making contact with a Scottish player's head at the ruck. Grant Gilchrist is off as well, having seen red for the same offence. France lead by 12 points to nil. Love afternoons like this on BBC Radio 5 Live. And still, if only we had a cup final to look forward to. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the main event still to come. League Cup final on the way from Wembley. Tottenham 2, Chelsea nil. Ben Chilwell giving it everything, charging down the left-hand side. Mudrik receives the ball from Chilwell. Romero's out there, wants to make his mark, does make his mark. Swing of the left leg, that's a bad foul. Oh, he's given a throw in. That's a foul, surely. I can't say the referees missed that. Romero quite clearly takes Mudrik down. In Mudrik's defence, to be fair, he gets up and quickly gets on with it because he knows what's at stake. Throw in from Ben Chilwell to Enzo Fernandez. Play stopped because Fafana was injured. Referee's checking he's OK. Fafana's complaining. Mason Mount's complaining. He's on a yellow card. Tough times for Chelsea players, for Graham Potter and the Chelsea fans at the moment. Way off it in the Premier League, starting the day in 10th position. I think they can very much forget about the top four. And if it's going to be the long-term project, as you say, they're still in the Champions League, but looks like it's going to have to be uh, get through the season and, and, and really try and go again next season. Fernandez lays it off to Koulibaly, to Chilwell. Tottenham fans are going to sing their team all the way to the finish. Here's Mudrik. Mudrik trying to get past two Tottenham players. Richarlison Royal as a team stop him and then Richarlison flicks the ball into the stands. Mudrik tries to take it off him. Two balls on the pitch again. Referee's happy for this to keep going. Fernandez hits the diagonal out towards Rhys James who slightly stumbles. Son tries to tackle him but Rhys James wins that 50-50 and back it comes to Wesley Fofana. Fofana creeping towards the Tottenham area. Has to play back to Koulibaly. Here's Fernandez. Fernandez floated ball to the right. Controlled by James. Closed down by Ben Davis. Havertz in support. Wide on the right. Turns away from Longley. James to Mount with his back to goal. Tottenham defending in numbers. Mount's found a bit of space though. Lays it off to his right to Reese James. Cross comes into the far post. Aubameyang jumps. Couldn't get there. Richarlison in the right back position. Goes running across. Mudrick falls over. Wants a free kick. Gets a free kick. Tottenham lead 2-0. Paul Robinson. Yeah, very good game management by Richarlison there. Ball just over hit into this bottom right hand corner. Richarlison knows exactly what he's doing. He runs just in front of Mudrich, puts his body in front of it, just waits for the tiniest little bit of contact and wins his side of free kick. Richarlison hides his face underneath his Tottenham shirt. His number's gone up. It's time for him to leave the stage. He's enjoyed himself this afternoon. The Premier League goal is still yet to come. Pedro Porro, recent loan signing from Sporting, is going to come on late on. Uh, for Tottenham, what did you make of Richarlison's performance this afternoon, Paul? Uh, as usual, he's given everything. His, his work rate is exceptional. I think defensively he gives you a little bit more than John Menson as well. I think he works back and he works hard for his team. I think he's been very frustrated at his lack of opportunities, as we saw there. Earlier on, he tried to have a strike and goal when it probably wasn't on. He's just desperate to get that goal. I think he's just grateful for game time. He's hoping for a run in the side. 89th minute of the game. Tottenham 2. Chelsea nil, Tottenham's last Premier League win over Chelsea back in November 2018, so the fans are going to enjoy this one. Kane, it's a fiery pass that Porro chases, just keeps in play, but can only concede a throw to Chelsea. He's infectious with Charleston, isn't he? He's one of those players that if he's on your team, you love him, but everyone that plays against him and opposition fans love to hate him. Throw in Chelsea, Ben Chilwell's being told to get back five yards by the assistant referee. Chilwell almost refuses there for a second, then sensibly decides to march back. Added time's going to go up shortly. Chilwell's throw down the line. Hoybier wins it for Tottenham. 
Porro has it wide on the right. Tottenham might play a bit of keep ball. No, Porro tries to nutmeg Chilwell. Two of them in a 50-50, and the last touch comes off Porro throwing Chelsea. They've been excellent to a man today of Tottenham, and I think the thing you can look at them defensively, Fraser Forster hasn't really had to make a save. He's rushed off his line once to thought Havertz, which was an exceptional piece of goalkeeping. But other than that, Chelsea haven't really yet had an attempt on target. Tottenham are such an odd team, aren't they? I mean, it's only a couple of weeks ago, they were absolutely rotten away to Leicester and got thumped 4-1. But then recently, they beat Manchester City and played like this against against Chelsea is absolutely head-scratching. Christian Stellini is going to make it four wins out of four. So Antonio Conte back in Italy recovering from his uh, gallbladder surgery. Might just be wise to rest up and let, let the right-hand man get on with it. Throw in Chelsea wide on the left. Closing stages. Six minutes of added time. So Chelsea have got six minutes to try and find two goals. Graham Potter hands behind his back, knowing those questions are coming his way again post-match television interviews radio interviews uh, and press interviews to do as well we'll bring you the reaction when we can here on five live sport this afternoon Chilwell wide on the left for Chelsea plays back here to Enzo Fernandez don't forget Tottenham have only had seven Premier League wins against Chelsea in 61 games so they are few and far between they're precious and they're special and it's coming Tottenham's way this afternoon, unless Chelsea can do something very dramatic here. Here's Fafana, corner of the Tottenham box, looking for support from James White on the right. James sees the run of Zacharias. Zacharias crosses, blocked by Longley. The ball goes up in the air, headed away. Volleyed by Chilwell on the right foot. Porro sort of scrapes the clearance away with his left boot. Mount is there. Wide to Mudrick on the left. Mudrick's cross in towards the far post. Davis jumps, heads it down. Son under pressure, chests it down and clears. Not far. Came with a little flick header away. Mount is there again for Chelsea. Loads and loads of Chelsea attacking here. They can't find a way through. Zakaria looking for a 1-2. Fernandez shot. Half hit. Skip got a touch. It's behind for it's a, a Chelsea corner. Brilliant interception by Oliver Skip there. He's just about to hit, hit the ball and Skip just puts his body on the line. But as you quite rightly say, Chelsea's record here and Spurs' record against Chelsea. Have you noticed how quiet this place has gone after six minutes injury time has been put up? The Spurs fans are still not yeah. convinced. Still don't believe. Four minutes of that. Added time to go. Corner for Chelsea. If they could get one here, could make it a little nervy. That's not great from Mudrick, straight into the near post and headed away. Chilwell goes racing back to cover it. Ball forward, intercepted by Porro, chests it down, starts to run at Chilwell down the right. He's going to keep going, Porro looks for that ball into space. Now, Son's quick, he's not that quick. No, it was really poor by Porro. He had plenty of space and plenty of time and he just gives the ball away in an area where his team just needed him to keep possession and run down the clock. Rhys James in the centre circle. Two and a half minutes to be played here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Chelsea, to their credit, still coming, still trying, still hoping that something might go in, that might just give them a sniff with a couple of minutes to go. For Fafana wide on the right to James. James, Ben Davis in front of him to Fafana. Fafana's pass is intercepted. They cannot find a way through. It's going to be another game. It's going to be one goal in the last six games for Chelsea if they don't score here. Yeah, they're really struggling going forward and like you say you, you can't really remember a clear attempt on goal or a shot that Fraser Force has had to deal with will they get a chance here Fernandez to Mudrick what a challenge by Romero Mount goes flying in to try and win it back now it's Mount against Royale racing for a ball Mount gives Royale a little shove Royale's on his back reacts doesn't like it and Tottenham get the throw in their right back position we're into the last couple of minutes of the game uh, Romero's been excellent today. He's been at the heart of this Tottenham defence. Whenever Tottenham defend well, there's no coincidence that Christian Romero's on the field. They struggle without him. When they played Eric Dyer on the right-hand side of the three, at times he's been exposed. With Romero and Longley either side of Dyer, they look very, very strong unit, but Romero's the key to that. Still goalless between Rangers and Celtic in the Scottish League Cup final. They're 20 minutes in there. Commentary available via the BBC Sounds app. 14 aside in Paris in the Six Nations. France ahead against Scotland. Commentary on that also available on the BBC Sounds app. League Cup final at Wembley on the way here on 5 Live. Koulibaly passes across the halfway line. Two minutes to go. Tottenham leading by two goals to nil. Skip and Kane. The name's on the score sheet. Fafana's pass easily intercepted. Son might be on his bike here. No, Davis couldn't find him. They've given the ball back to Chelsea. Rhys James, that's an interception from Hoybierg. Hoybierg sets off on his own down the left. Zakaria <laughs> knocks him over. Hoybierg goes down and stays down. Tottenham running the game down very nicely. And Graham Potter just oh so frustrated on the, on the touchline. Really, yeah, look at that. Puff of the cheeks. 
difficult. Just you feel for him, Paul, don't you? You feel for him because it's it's not nice. I was going to say exactly that. You feel for him because it was always going to be a progression. It was always going to be difficult to take over where he did and progress the club onto the level in the way that he wants to. It's a completely different style. It's a different managerial style. It's a different managerial setup. And when you watch them in the first half here and you watch them in the first half against West Ham, you can see there is there is shoots. That you can certainly see what he's trying to do, but they aren't getting results and they aren't good enough going forward. Tottenham come looking for a third. Ben Davis down the left, decided against the early ball. He's played it back to Hoybjerg. Porro's got both arms in the air. He's screaming here. Oliver Skip can't hear him because of the noise levels inside the stadium. And Christian Romero's got it. And we're now into the last minute of the game. Skip flying into another challenge. So in the 96th minute of the game, Skip still had the energy to sprint 20 yards there, win the ball for Tottenham. Kane's back there winning another tackle as well. It's been a great performance from Tottenham. Yeah, Skip and Romero have been outstanding. Skip, you know, he played really, really well in Milan. Him and Saar were excellent. And I thought it would be Saar out of the two that got the nod to play alongside Hoiberg. But it hasn't. It's been Oliver Skip and he's been brilliant since he's come into the side. And again today, especially getting his goal. Last 20 seconds of the game, you're going to get a massive roar on that full-time whistle. Skip bounces off Zakaria. Long lay in with a hefty challenge, the ball falls to Son, this will be the last attacking action and here goes Son up to the halfway line, cuts in field, looks for Kane, it's blocked by Fernandez. Skip and Fernandez in a 50-50, the ball comes off the pair of them, there you go, those roars signal the full-time whistle, it is a rare Tottenham win over Chelsea by two goals to nil and it is that horrible, familiar, sinking feeling of defeat for the Chelsea boss, Graham Potter. They cannot find a goal. They cannot buy a win at the moment. Oliver Skip and Harry Kane with the two goals for Tottenham. And they deserve the victory, Paul Robinson. They were excellent today. We don't know what Tottenham's going to turn up from one week to the next, but it was the Tottenham we saw at home against Manchester City. They really, really had a game plan today. They sat deep at times, allowed Chelsea possession. Chelsea, to their credit, in the first half, they had lots of possession, but no end product. They really, really really do lack a striker you can see progression under Potter but they really do like that cutting edge going forward Tottenham on the other hand defensively excellent going forward excellent and a massive three points for them today plenty to talk about from this game on 606 tonight highlights match of the day two BBC one half past ten Tottenham strengthen their grip on fourth spot they move four points behind Manchester United four points ahead of Newcastle United and those two teams about to do battle at Wembley it's finished here Tottenham two Chelsea nil Steve